Ritz Fresh Stacks. Grab and go for a perfect playground day. Pain hits fast, so get relief fast. Only Tylenol Rapid Release Gels have laser drilled holes. They release medicine fast for fast pain relief. And now...
got a proposal for you by sharing your stream to a quick community for you to achieve your streaming goals and start earning at me on Discord to discuss more for Capital IRL 1671. Since I saw a good video how to draw heads and angles.
are you doing this to not get banned? I saw some video on drawing water. Says as realistic as possible.
There we go. I don't know what the hell. Today is not OBS is fucking up today. Oh well. Yes, because that would make sense. Because you not like you ask the music to be turned off. Which I do thank you on that, because I didn't know that was playing in the background. Yes, that what NPCs do, or that events now. We're living in the future, but the NPC can just do a YouTube channel by itself. Okay. So, the back is like this. This is being sit on. The waist is like this. Alright. The legs are... Have the head. I'll draw the head first. And then you put the head here so you know where they're looking at each other like this. Let me see like that. And then with Arian. Teach would the legs be more straight or just leave it the way they are in the reference? The girl uh, who's holding the other one on her the back. Legs are I the mean. last of your worries. What you need to worry about is the that should be the last thing you worry about. You need to get this overall placement right. So the foreshortening of the arms will be here. The shoulder will be here. And because she's on an angle, the neck will be about here. Because we're seeing the neck and the shoulder it's kind of like doing this thing where it's slanting here. So because it's slanting like this, we have to make sure that this shoulder is going down as this neck is being shown. All right, so when, when we do this, we have to make sure that the body is looking not too short or too long. So the leg will indicate, because we don't need to draw the butt or anything because we don't see it. We only see the leg. So the leg will be here. And the leg should not be any higher. The foot stops where the kneecaps are. That's the landmarking that you need to put. And then when you do that, you put the foot like this. Put the foot like this. Right? And then you put the other leg like that. The leg here is on the same length, so you have to put this down here a little bit, like about here. They have to be the same where the kneecaps are, because they're adjacent from each other. So make sure that they're adjacent, don't make one bigger than the other. And make sure the sizing is not that big either. So the leg is like this. The l now, like I said, the kneecap is here, right? So the foot that is actually going off in the distance is going to have its um it's going to have geez it's going to have um we call it let me see here like that foot about here yes it's going to have cheese <laughs> Okay, so put the foot like this. So that's how much ha we we just need to do that from that point. Then we connect it together by erasing this part. Now I would say it's a little bit robotic the way it looks, but that's not the that's not the importance right now. The importance is getting the overall concept in, and then you can make whatever adjustments you need to make. Get the idea out first. Don't try to make it perfect on the first try. We're not professionals right now. We're not live. We're not working on a professional level right now. So right now we're just looking at it more of a novice beginner level. Now the foot is a little bit too short. I'm gonna make it a bit longer. About there. This foot is too short too. Bigger. 
Now, we got the overall idea of the leg here. Okay. The leg is here. It has to be wrapped around. How would I... Uh, I guess she is female. Well, you only from the chest, from the hair. That's it. Since based on the angle we're looking at it from. The hair, the chest, and the hands. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Breasts as well. Okay, like so. Now we know it's female, pretty much, at this point. Okay. I will fix the leg a little bit, uh, a little bit because the legs are a little bit more closer, a little bit spread out, just to give more of a balance to the body here. This is not okay. All right now, I believe this is too big, this character right here, so I would make it a bit smaller. Because she's not the f closest thing to us. She's more further away. Her legs are more closer towards us than her whole other body. Now, it's not going to be that small, but it won't be that big either. Remember, we have to make sure that there's depth between them. Oh, between us and the characters that's there. Hello, Nama. Oh, it's Hum. Is it Hum? No, it's not Hum. It's uh, Nama. I think it was in here before, with the animations. I think he was asking about uh, what's the best animations or something like that, or something like that point. I think it was you or someone else, I don't remember. But I do recognize the name and the profile picture. So it's like that. So when like that, right? And the shoulder shouldn't be out that far. I would erase most of this. I was the one who asked about the shading on TikTok and I finally got it down thanks to you. Okay, no problem. I hope that was helpful. Glad that was helpful. I mean, sorry for that word. Um, I'm glad that it helped. I appreciate it for you letting me know it helped. I appreciate it highly. Thank you. I <sighs> will make this hand a bit smaller. Shouldn't be that big. Have uh, the wrist like this because of that. Okay. This is the sound of your ride home with dad after he caught you vaping. Here we go. Now the neck here, yeah, shoulder, shoulder up there. That's pretty much what that is. Oh man, I wanted to see your thing. Oh man, uh, let me see. You sent me that. Oh, the jump. Oh, it's the, okay. 
The waist and the butt looks off. Should I move the butt higher? Uh, yes. Actually, the butt is not the problem. It's the other leg. It's the crotch area. It's 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 uh it's kind of like not connected. It's kind of like broke. I would fix that part. I would I would actually um widen the leg. So the leg. Let me show you. I'll show you. I got you, Mono. Hold on, one bro. So I'll do this real quick. I know you probably have to go. So let me just point out what you need to fix. I would, I would fix. I would fix. The, the butt needs to be lifted. I got it. And then this leg should... Actually, it's not even that leg. It's this leg. I would make this leg a little bit more wider. So I would have widened this leg. Because the indication of the crotch is here. So, like, if I said here... Make this a bit higher. Bring the butt here. And remember, the knees are always adjacent from each other, so one is not shorter than the other. So, like, if one like this, the knee should have been here. Uh, leg. The ar the arms way too. But it's not technically wrong, but the problem is, is that it's too straight. I would have been made it more organic, like this. But this here... Yeah, I would make this part a little bit here. And then what I would do is the breast here is kind of off. So I would fix the breast here. This right, and then made it as one. Actually, I would curve it a little bit more like this, like that. No, we're not doing this. Um, hold on. Okay, so yeah, I would have made all these changes there. The hand is way too high, close to the breast, as you can see in the reference. Um, if you look closely, there is a gap between. There is a gap between. Oh, there's a gap between the breast and the hand. Yours, there's see that negative space here. Or better yet, use a better color. Like that, right? And then yours has no negative space. Oh, you did have a negative space when you first draw it, but it's too big of a gap. Look at that giant compared to that, compared to the gap I found. It's only a triangle. It's more of a triangle like this, right? But yours is more like like a diamond shaped. So I would fix that. How are you feeling? Hello, hi. I'm doing well. How are you feeling, Bean? Are you feeling okay, hon? Oh, you're feeling sick. Hope you don't pass it to the little 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 guy. Or the ant man. So you need to fix those. That's and then also with the face. Let me see. 
yeah, her face is needs some adjustments. Jawline supposed to be one. Oh, the jawline supposed to be one two. Like that. Sick. Aunt gave it to me. Ah, oh, okay. It was it was Aunt that gave it to you. Okay, okay. Sorry, sorry about that. Hope he. Oh, well, I'm pretty sure he's feeling better now, isn't he? Should be right. Oh, okay. So that was something you're doing on your own. So I can't actually go and uh, correct that too much since he was trying something. Um. Now the leg here, as you can see, there's a giant, you can see there's a giant negative space here, this triangle-like shape. Uh, as you can see, yours is way too thin. You need to widen that leg. You need to widen it. That's where the problem's coming in. See, the, the best way to really analyze something is look at the landmarks, right? And use negative space. Yeah, you, it's going to be a lot. So if you want to take a picture of this you can go ahead you can s screenshot this if you like I'll be back again okay hi you can screen let me turn this light on you can screenshot that if you like what well, you need a fix yeah okay. all right Also for you, Ari, the leg here is going to be no problem. Let me go to back to Ari. Ari's leg, the arm here. Okay, later. Thank you for coming in. I appreciate it. Now the arm will wrap around the leg like this as the leg kind of like it's right here there's a bit of a gap here if you want to put the gap there if you want but they're wearing black so it doesn't really matter but there is a gap to indicate that there is some form of space but I don't think it's a big one I think it's really thin like about this thin okay anyway back to what I was doing then so much you got it so far all right, so for those of you here, thank you for coming in. For those um, coming back, sorry for the inconvenience of the other day. I'm back on stream. Um, we will be doing some reactions in a couple of minutes. Usually you have to, but if you use your 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 observation skills by using um, negative space and landmarking, if you use landmarking methods, then that will make it much easier. It'll help you kind of measure out it in your head without trying to pull out a ruler or having any numbers being like involved. Always use the the landmarking method is basically, for instance, let's use an example, like, uh, it's like the, it's like using the, let me see, it's like me doing this drawing. So like, like for instance, if I said her eyes here, her eyes are no, it stays between, or not, let's better, yeah, let's use a better example. The, the okay this the, the the flap of this of the of the sleeve this sleeve does not pass the el only pass the elbow by this much and it's on the tip of the boob right here or it stops right here at the waistline it passes the waist here and stops at the thigh or the the love handle so that tells me whenever i draw this it should not be Based on the pose, I'm saying, not the character, but the pose itself. Because the pose is this way, the breast, it only, it, it's at its apex here, or I would say here. And it stops right there, a little past the elbow. A little bit past the elbow. So that you're landmarking it at, based on the pose. And then you can use, um, 
uh, we call it negative space methods like okay because I know it doesn't pass this 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 is the shape that Arian. it should be making it's sometimes getting the head shape I can get the shape down okay but it tends to look either to large or to small depending on how I draw it hold on I'll turn up more higher. Thank you, Joe, for following. Thank you, Mark and Anarchist, for following. So yeah, it's kind of like that if you stop and think of it. It's about the negative space within that self. So like, if you get the, the landmarking of where something is, like uh, in that sense, it makes it much easier to make a, a more education, a more educated guess, even if you're not totally sure. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, now let me get this head, uh, this face right. Says thanks. No problem. Now this is where the problem comes in. It's this it's kinda of pulled. The face is kinda of pulled. So we need to fix that part. Thank you, Allie, for following. Thank you, Allie, for following. I do appreciate it. I hope you're having an awesome day. For those who are coming in and following, I hope you're having an awesome day. Thank you. I appreciate it. The more you guys follow, the more I can end up be doing animation soon. Um, just to be clear, I'm just doing this drawing of Izu because of something trending going on, on Twitter or something, some shit that my um my uh my mod told me about. So I'm giving it my putting my hat and ring in that, and then after that, um, I think I'll do more skin studies, and then also do a drawmation. I'm working on. Okay, here and here. For those who don't know, hello, my name is Artectris. I am a anime artist, anime Says character designer and training. Art. And also, yes, I did see it actually. Um, I didn't get the comment on it, but I did see it. I only saw him when I got on live, so I didn't get the comment. Raya Ga but, um, Samurai. Thank you, Good afternoon, hello. everyone. Hello. Oh, wait. Right, uh, right, we're on TikTok, so you can come over here if you like too bro but you can stay over there we're about to do reactions in a bit so it's up to you says look at my Deku. yes sir. let me see says hi bro says bride Raiga samurai oh okay says your name is bro law this is Aries drawing. Those are there. Says it was a typo all new. How do you see the hair? Is it in layers? Um, yes, it's in a layer, but since I'm doing a sketch, I usually do the most of the sketch in one layer, because it's just a sketch. I don't try to be beholden to the sketch unless it's something that's necessary. Um, layers, if, if it's about to do like line art or something specific, or so. Good job, Aerie.
Okay. No. Okay. Alright. Hmm. Okay. I think that's fine. I let's flip it. Let's see how it looks flipped. Oh, that looks a lot better. It looks good. That's a lot more balanced. I think a little bit of this curve here needs to be a little bit adjusted, but we're on a good start. We're not good. We're on a good place. So let's let's balance that out a little bit. So it's just a little more balanced. Okay. Let's see how that looks now. I think that's okay. It's not that bad. I think a little bit of the chin needs to be okay. Hold on. Push this out a little bit more. Okay. Oops. Nah, put it back. Just, just put it back. It's not that serious. Says hi, Bean and Aaron. Hello. You don't get lost with the hair. Nope, I do not. I honestly do not get lost in the hair pattern. No, Says I do not. Bright for close. Hello, Bry the Great. I think this is good. Now what we need to do is do the eyes. That's where that will come in. So let's get this right. Oh, that plush oil. Hey, okay, let me see here. Okay, let's flip this. Says Lol TBH Deku is pretty dang cute. Hmm. Okay, like that. Let me grab this. Make it smaller. Hmm. 
says we love Shoto Toe found a new Anim character that kinda has his same hair by Blall. Says or whatever his name is, I keep forgetting it. Todoroki, Todoroki, Todoroki. Oh, this chin is lopsided. Okay. Says his so gosh dang cute. I think that's the problem. Is it, his chin is too lopsided. Thank you for the following. No, curve it a little bit more. A little bit more of a slant. were uneven it was driving me insane I know says that a known user for five his mom Let's see okay. says it bright or close HII Thank you, Beanbag, for sending one X heart me. Says my precious beanie baby, hello, kissy kissy. Thank you. Says that Rinichi Ichai, I love. Oh my god, it's corn. Oh, that was my me. I forgot to say this. For those who want um, a PNG tuber, that that's only one of. It, it, you don't have to send. If you want to get, I forgot to mention this. So like, um, the as you can see, the character that I have here. If you want one like this, well, I created one. You gotta send two. Whatever's on the menu, you have to send two. But if you want a PNG, Korean. uh, teach when I send this over. I hope you don't mind me using a method where it shows the arms, legs, etc., like in cubes, to show where the placement is more easily. Whatever helps. Um, but if if you want a PNG tuber. A PH tuber is basically like it's not like mine, but it's you can use it for VTubing. Um, it's more of a cheaper version. You only have to send one instead of sending two. So if that's something that interests you, you can be a PNG tuber. And you have to do no rigging whatsoever. So you can just get the drawing as it is and use it as your I don't think you do any rigging at all. Says what's paying. PNG tubers are basically a VTuber. It's a it's a VTuber, but the difference is you're not gonna be able to do all the movements and eye uh, movements and hair uh, fluidity and stuff. It's literally like a pitcher, but a pitcher that reacts whenever you talk. So when you talk, it opens its mouth and it blinks when you blink, but that's it. It doesn't do anything other than that. Um, if you type in PNG tubers, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's a more cheaper version. Says so kind of like a rigged character. No, you're not rigging it Says at all. Okay. There's no rigging. It's very ever any rigging. You're not going to have a program and stuff like that. 
you just get the drawing Send as it, it is. No fancy bells and whistles. Yeah. So if you want one, you can just send one of the thing. I, it's at the bottom. Um, I forgot where the menu I put in. It's on uh, TikTok. I forgot to mention that. I was supposed to change that other thing when I got on live, but I forgot to mention it. Um, let me see. Uh, TikTok menu, TikTok menu. Where is it? There it is. Says I sent you something on TikTok you can react to. I know, I know, I have that. Um, yeah. So a VTubing chibi model is worth two TikTok universe. But if you just want to send one TikTok universe, you can get a PNG tuber. I forgot to change that. I will change that and uh, make that easy for anyone who wants one. You can use it as your beginning starting rig. It'll be half the price of the 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 the, the more uh, dynamic one like I have. Okay. Let me get this out of the way and then we'll go start doing Since reactions. Literally AM. That's Izu. Let me get this away out of the way. Says paying six hundred dollars for TikTok universe. Yeah. Says if I ever do get into trying rigging, I'm going to seriously study it. Yep, you should. I'll benefit you. Mm-mm. It'll benefit you anyway if you do study, you don't have to pay someone to do rigging. If you do it yourself, most people can do it by themselves, it's just that it's tedious. And there's some things you should learn and know before you start getting to it. Says I understood the basics, but the more advanced stuff spun my brain a bit. Yep. That's what happens.
book fans know that Amazing Spider-Man Raya Ga Samurai Yo Is the flagship for Marvel Comics the biggest book, the most important, most comic book fans Raya Samurai. Teach your muted. There you go. Thank you. Now, this is Wes from Thinking Critical. For those who um, don't know, he's a YouTuber who does a bunch of comic books, especially comic books specifically, anything comic related, um, talking about what's playing comics, what's good about comics, about this and that third. If you care about that, like Marvel, DC, Dark Horse, or IDW, this is something you might want to watch right here. If you don't care about that, that's perfectly fine. You can still pay attention to the artwork I'm doing and all the great stuff. So it says here, the stupidest Marvel comic Spider-Man idea ever. So it seems like Marvel still don't know how to use Spider-Man correctly. They don't like this dude or what case may be. I don't know what the issue is. Well, we all know what the issue is. But um, it just seems like there's just no respect for this individual. I just don't know. So with that said, let's go. I feel bad for Stanley. So let's go. Most comic book fans know that Amazing Spider-Man is the flagship for Marvel Comics, the biggest book, the most important book they put out every single month. But you wouldn't know it by the way that Marvel Comics and Zeb Wells and Nick Lowe are treating the book as of late. It's just been a complete mess under Zeb Wells. The beginning stories with Tombstone, perfectly fine. Everything else has been crap. You think, well, it can only get better after gang war. It can only get better after this or that. And every time Zeb Wells finds a way to subvert my expectations and there was something that came out on social media this week and I looked at it and I was like, there's no way that can be true because that is the stupidest idea. Not only in the history of Spider-Man, well, maybe that's the second stupidest idea because you do have one more day, but it does look stupider than anything that came out in during one more day. But this is one of the stupidest ideas in the history of Marvel Comics, period. Mm -hmm. One of the dumbest ideas ever. Marvel, for some reason, have become a company instead of being the house of ideas. They go, let's take a concept that would make a provocative or interesting variant cover. And let's actually make that who the character is. And that's basically what's happening with Peter Parker Spider-Man because he's going to become an abomination at this point. Peter Parker will become a variation of the Green Goblin in Marvel Comics' all-new Easy Being Green arc, which begins with Maze Amazing Spider-Man number 50 from writers of Wells and artists Ed McGinnis and Todd Knock. But the why? The recently released Ed McGinnis' cover for July's Amazing Spider-Man 53 with the first appearance. I'm not going to lie. As much as this is a dumb idea, um, I'm not going to take it seriously. I'm going to take it to a point where it's just, just an art variant. It's just a, a, a variant Spider-Man. That, that's all I'm seeing. I'm not going to see it as like a anything like canon or say anything serious to take too serious. It's just an art variant cover. It's just an art variant Spider-Man that you shouldn't take nothing seriously. It'll die off probably. ...of the Spider Goblin. I am beyond gobbling out. I actually didn't think they could come up with a dumber idea than the Gold Goblin, but they truly did outdo themselves. The it was Spider probably Goblin. trying to do what Batman, what they did with the, the Batman who laughs, so that they combined the Joker and the Batman as one. So they're trying to do that same thing. I don't know if that's how the story goes, but based on what I'm seeing, it looks like they're just smashing both villain and hero as one and making something much more of, a, of an abomination than it should. Um... I think that's what they're trying to do. That's what it sounds like to me. So, it is what it is. Goblin. With a Green Goblin themed or Amazing Spider-Man themed Green Goblin character. Oh my goodness. It just looks so stupid. I feel bad. I feel terrible for Ed McGinnis. One of the greatest artists of his generation. One of the best artists still remaining that works regularly at marvel comics does interiors not all the time but he actually does interior work obviously does a lot of covers and he has to do the spider goblin just 
They are clearly out of ideas. There's nothing left for them to do with the character. Kill Peter Parker off. Just murder him in some fantastical way. Make it meaningful and move on from the character if you literally cannot do anything more interesting than turning him into the fucking Green Goblin. It's just, it's, it's so frustrating be, being a Marvel fan. You know, there are series out there that maybe aren't that important. And even as a comic book reviewer, I can just, you know, kind of skip them. Uh, Size Freighter's Flash. I pay it no mind. I don't yeah. know what's happened for the last four months because the, the series is literally so unimportant and so stupid that I just don't pay attention to it. I cannot treat Amazing Spider-Man. I can't treat Batman. I can't even treat Detective Comics like that. And I'm just being inundated with these terrible fucking ideas on all the mainline, frontline, flagship fucking characters of both companies. And it's, uh, my goodness, it's, <laughs> it's so frustrating. And there's going to be all these stupid YouTubers out there being like, oh, this is spec value. We might see the Spider Goblin in a cartoon or a movie one day. He's like, who gives a fine fuck? Like, God, you got to stop supporting this stuff. It, it, <laughs> there's no spec value to you. There's no spec value to the Spider Goblin because there's no future for the character because it's not a character. It's a caricature. It's a stupid idea. It's a variant cover gone wrong. It's the fucking garbage bale kids in 2024 is exactly what shit like the Spider Goblin is. And uh, as if, if you haven't noticed, I'm a little bit frustrated with this situation. Yeah, I understand. They continuously come up with dumb. Yeah, I understand. I, just, I, I know where he's coming from. It's coming to this point where these idiots don't know what to do with these, these legacy characters at all because the previous people who created them or knew how to use them is gone. So these new writers or these uh, disgruntled writers are writing these type of stories where... The character is just not the character anymore. It's just someone. It's just a punching bag, or just a experiment piece, or a vehicle to push or uh, destroy in its own self. It's weird. Hi, are you listening to it again, or listening to what? It's a little tricky to draw, but I'm getting used to it. It's it's weird. It's very very strange. What the hell? Fucking ideas can Zeb Wells and Nick Lowe come up with together? It feels like they're trying to break a record at this point. Per Marvel, Peter Parker carries the weight of Norman Osborn's sins and takes to the skies as the Spider Goblin. Queen Goblin imbued a spear with the sins of Norman Osborn, the metaphysical essence of his murderous dark side, and gave it to Craven, who stabbed Spider Man with it, infusing him with Osborn's sins and bringing out Peter's dark side. Spider-Man eventually became free of the effects, but with the reappearance of Goblin Queen, but with the reappearance of Queen Goblin and the spear in Amazing Spider-Man 47, uh, it remains to be seen if this bears any implication sure for how Peter will soon to. become the Spider Goblin. It's exactly how Peter is going to become the Spider the, Goblin. The reactions you get oh, coming God. on when YouTube. I saw this week and I, I saw one. the Goblin Queen, Queen Goblin again, and right at that moment I was like, oh, I forgot how Goblin out I was. There's so many variations of this stupid character. And I'd actually mind dumped. I'd head yeah, out here on, fucking on the stupid spear and all the sins of Norman Osborn in the spear that Craven stabbed Peter Parker with. I was hoping it would never be revisited again. And for some reason, we're going to go out and revisit the dumbest shit that anyone's come up with with Spider-Man over the last five years. Just, just terrible ideas. You know, in this week's, or last week's, I guess now, Amazing Spider-Man issue, fucking looks great million bucks todd knock on there refreshing change from john romita jr it looks so great and as you read it you're just like huh all this stuff that happened two years ago that no one cares about why are we revisiting it now because they're gonna break out the spider goblin the big gun because they ran out of ideas that's ultimately what they did they ran out of ideas that's all they did they ran out of ideas people they're really Jeez. searching Maybe to, they just want to sell very covers at this point because, okay, right. and uh, it was a very frustrating read this week it was frustrating to see todd knock another fantastic artist at marvel comics they don't have that many being wasted on such a stupid story and now to realize that it's only going to get dumber and dumber and dumber as zeb wells continues on aimlessly on fucking amazing spider-man and gets pantsed by jonathan hickman 
and Marco Cicchetto and everyone else associated with Ultimate Spider-Man, which is quickly becoming the Spider-Man book of choice. I think that book is going to outsell Amazing Spider-Man for the next two or three years. There's no way Zeb Wells has any staying power at this point. It's actually, you don't ever see this. Amazing Spider-Man, if you look at the sales rankings that are available from Comics Hub this past month, in March, it was actually outside of the top five. That never happens to Batman, and it certainly never happens to Amazing Spider-Man, but people are getting fed up with this shit, getting fed up with Zeb Wells' lame-ass, stupid take on, on Spider-Man that really is nothing that anyone that's ever been a fan of the character ever wanted to see, and it's not even interesting. That's the worst part. It's fucking boring. It's tedious. It's lame. <sighs> And it's certainly anything in the world but fun to read. It's a fucking chore at this point, and it's only going to get worse as we get up to it ain't easy being green, fellas, <laughs> because Peter Parker is going to become Norman Osborn. Osborn, the original Green Goblin, changed after the Sin Eater purged Norman's metaphysical dark side. Norman has attempted to make amends by employing Peter Parker at Oscorp and allying himself with Spider-Man as Gold Goblin. Ryder Wells has previously teased Osborne's return to villainy as the Green Goblin with the upcoming Easy Being Green and Amazing Spider-Man 50 potentially being where it happens. Well, I guess we know that it, it's going to happen, or maybe they're just going to combine. We're going to have Peter Osborne or Norman Parker as the stupid Spider Goblin. They're going to become one entity or something stupid like that that no one ever wanted to read. And they are taking a lot of this stuff with the Sin Eater and then the, the sins of Norman Osborn uh, being taken away from him are all coming out of that Nick Spencer Spider-Man run, which was actually good, shockingly good, after all the damage that Nick Spencer did to his reputation Beanbag. with uh, Secret I Invasion I think the best thing that that's happening stuff, to the Nazi. MCU is Deadpool and Wolverine. I don't... Beanbag. Wait, what Goblin Spider-Man? Yeah, so what what Wes here is talking we're talking about the comic books, we're not talking about the the movies. We're he's talking about the he's talking about the comic books itself. He's not talking about the the movies. Um uh, he's not talking about the MCU at all. Um the MCU always refers to that of the movies, but uh, uh he's talking about this variant of uh comic book of spider-man and the green goblin combined as one it's not something that people want it's not people ask for it seems like they don't know what to do with spider-man at all and i think west is right. if you're going to i'm excited about that movie yeah i i understand why most people will be excited for it but uh, i i'm pretty sure it won't be a bad movie but i'm pretty Bean sure bag. it's not going to fix the problems that's, that's not good that's that's not um plaguing the MCU. The MCU MCU needs a major reboot. It needs a major rework. It needs to stop pandering to minorities and women so fast. It needs to fix itself. It needs to fresh out their characters that have problems, that have weaknesses, that have um uh, uh struggle. And this is mainly towards the females, per se. Beanbag. Whoever came up with that idea should be fired. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they should be. They should see the variant cover. It looks terrible. But, like, like the MCU needs to be fixed. It like Now, nothing's wrong with the actors. They're just doing their job. It's not the actors. It's not even the females. It's the writers that's the problem. And this DEI nonsense, that's what's causing these things to be ass. Till they fix that, then everything will be fine. You can write an awesome female uh, MCU um, character. Just don't make her into a girl boss who can do everything. She's super smart. She's very. She has masculine male traits for some odd reason. She's stoic for some odd reason, and then um, she can do no wrong, and everything she does is perfect, and she has no weaknesses whatsoever, and she's pretty much a Mary Sue by default, and. You know what I'm saying it's just it's a it's 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 a trope that's not only been beaten to death, but it's a trope that's not relatable to anyone, whether you're a male, female, or anything in between. And that's the problem with the MCU. It it panders too much, and Disney tries its damnedest to not change its ways. But you know, 
It is what it is. Disney did a better job at diversity when they was not forced to do diversity. That's the uh, that's the most awkward and ironic thing about Disney. Disney 20 plus years ago or 15 plus years ago did better when they didn't have to be forced DEI stuff. They did a better job making diverse movies on diverse characters and minorities when they was not forced to do it. They did Mulan. They did The Princess and the Frog. They did, um, what was another one? Um, well, I guess you can say the Pixar movies with the Up. They did great with uh, Coco. They did great with... Um... Beanbag. Yup. Well, I mean, say this is not technically Pixar, but this is Disney animation. Those are two different things. A lot of people think Pixar and Disney animation are two different things. No, Pixar is Disney's sister company that they have or they required. Pixar is kind of their own thing, but they're under the the thumb of Disney, so they don't really make anything else other for Disney. So, uh, Zootopia did fine, even though it's not technically a bi diverse group. It was more of messaging, and they did a better job messaging in that movie than they did in Lost World. The only thing it was pushing in Lost World is that you need to accept your orientational son. That's it. Oh, and stop being a masculine man or something like that, because women like non-masculine men, because that, that really works out for them and men and... and Anyway, the point is is that Disney did a shit job with the whole changes and following this diversity. Ultimately, I, I'm not even mad at Disney at this point. I, it's What's happening here, Disney and all these companies through all this DEI, ESG nonsense, bridge, whatever you want to f- refer to it as, they're all symptoms of the same problem coming from one particular company or two of them is BlackRock, Vanguard, and Larry Fink. These are the three things that needs to be either removed completely or totally reworked, right? Once you remove these Being three bag. things out of the way, things will Treasure work out. Planet will forever be my favorite. They did. They See, the thing with Treasure Planet is that what they could have did with Treasure Planet was bring it back to the forefront. But, but it's best they don't bring it back to the forefront of like a live action because what's going to happen is they're going to push a bunch of messaging that was not in there actually quite frank they don't even need to put messaging in that movie what they really need to do is just redo the whole movie all over again live action from word to word because honestly the movie had a great message about uh being uh lacking purpose uh having a strong father figure in your life um being being open to the idea of change and all these other things. It, it, it had a lot of messaging that was strong for boys and girls alike and even people of certain orientation and minority, whatever the fuck you would identify or you are you from. It was a great movie because it had a messaging that shows that you can be yourself and you don't have to sacrifice it to get to where you need to be. And if you have a great guardian, caretaker, or parent, especially a father in your life, you you will do just fine. You know what I'm saying? Because I ain't going to talk about the single mom because the single mom was already presented in that movie as a hardworking mom. Same thing. Like, like I kind of look at... The way I look at Treasure Plan is how I look at Iron Giant. It's really weird. I look at Iron Giant as that as um, Treasure Planet. If you really stop and think about it, they're almost not the same movie, but they have the same type of messaging in some form. It's very, very similar when you stop and think about it. So... Hmm. Cap, he comes back, redeems himself on Amazing Spider-Man, and basically, he's almost at the finish line. He's about to retcon one more day. Peter Parker's got the freaking engagement ring in his pocket. He's getting ready to ask Mary Jane the question. Obviously, he gets interrupted, but he was going to get back to it eventually. So, Zeb Wells, the fucking genius. That they he are kind of similar. Very similar. They're similar in their ways, but uh, drastically different at the same time. 
real fucking brain trust there. They go back and they're like, well, what was it about Nick Spencer's run that people were liking? Well, I think it was the Sin Eater. I think it was Norman Osborn. Trust me, once they get their hands on Treasure Planet and ever, doubt, ever even think of making a live action movie, they will fuck it all up. I'm not even going to play this game. They will destroy the entire Treasure Planet live action if they decide to do it, if there is one in the works. They will destroy it. They will destroy the messaging in that. They will destroy the overall tone of that. They will not get it. They will push something that was never in there in the first place from the original and then try to make you force you to take it. I know they would. They'll destroy it. They'll The casting will be off. The casting... Oh, they might even gender swap the, the original character. Which is funny because if you stop and think about it, I know a lot of people on the LGBT... Uh, side really enjoy that movie. A lot of people on that side of the aisle like that movie for what it is. So if they ever try to change the character for those very reasons, they already destroyed the movie before it even began. It's dead on arrival. Because I know a bunch of LGBT uh, members who watch that movie, seen that movie, and enjoy that movie for what it is, and that's it. Nope, I'm telling you, once Disney says, hmm, we're going to do it, they're going to ruin it. The best thing for Disney to ever do is never touch their back catalog. What they should do is always make something new. So at least when things go left, you they can virtue signal and they can also pander and also make the audience feel like shit for not taking their new stories. They can do that. But when you take the old stories and they expect people to just accept it for what it is, you're going to have a fucking problem. Seeing sins being taken away from them, going on to Peter Parker. It had nothing to do with the fact that they were going to get the marriage back together and get Peter and MJ back together, and he was about to pop the question again. We're back, basically going to be able to get back to where Peter Parker and MJ should have been the whole time. No, let's go back and borrow all the shit that nobody cared about. That was all on the peripheral of all the stuff that people were invested in, and the reason that Amazing Spider-Man was a great book, people were loving it, and they were coming back for more and more every single month. Yeah, let's skip all the stuff that people wanted to read and just do Bean more bag. misery porn with Peter Parker. I mean, aren't they making another Spider movie of Moana or live action? Yes, they are. Um, at first, uh, if I remember right, we did this video. We did the video on that. We did the video on uh, Clownfish talking about that very thing about the Moana thing, and it came to be that it was kind of like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I don't think this movie's going to do well. Well, because it hasn't been, I don't think it has, I think it's been, has it been 10 years? When did Moana come out? Guys, it's me. When, what, what, what year did Moana come out? Beanbag. Uh, it's been a while. Has it been 10 years already? It doesn't feel like it has. Goblin. One of Marvel's most dangerous couples is finally together again after months of separation by hell itself, with the benefactor having her sights set on restarting an old war against Peter Parker. Beanbag. In the recently released Amazing Spider-Man 2016. Movie, and Riley, and 2016? Dobby's it hasn't been 10 years then. Well, not yet. In two years it will be. I'm not gonna lie. But like, Raya Jesus Christ. Samurai. 2016 doesn't feel like 10 years it feels like kind of like five holy shit business with the queen goblin has only just begun my concept of time has been warped ever chasm. since these movies like ever since the dei and esg you're more vigilant on them more so it feels like you're always near these characters these these movies yeah yeah it was in 2016 jesus christ mm -hmm. And Hallow's Eve. Um, like I said, I within that. that amazing Spider-Man 47, there are so many returns that you forgot about that you hope Zeb Wells and Nick Lowe and everybody associated with, with oh, Amazing and then Spider Man another thing. just going to forget. I do understand that people are excited for the Deadpool movie and Wolverine. I am kind of too. But given Disney's track record, it just doesn't put a good taste in my mouth. Um, I know for a fact that this movie is not going to fix the MCU. I don't think so. 
if anything, they're going to make fun of the majority of the, the choices they made within the MCU multiverse um, saga. I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen here. I don't think... I honestly don't think that uh, Deadpool is going to be running around trying to fix the problems of the MCU and where Bob Iger and uh, Josh... We uh, what is Josh, uh, uh, what is his name? Josh Whedon? Not Josh Whedon. The, other, the, the, the the director of Marvel, I'm pretty sure they're not going to fix the problems. The only thing that's going to happen is probably introduce some new characters, probably, and then also bring in the X-Men completely into the MCU completely from this point on. And then it's going to bring Hugh Jackman's uh, Wolverine, Wolverine variant in there. Also might even bring his replacement at the same exact time in this movie, I'm pretty sure. Because Hugh Jackman's old now, and I'm pretty sure he can't be doing Wolverine forever. It'll be kind of a pain in the ass, I'm pretty sure. But then again, I never really know. Because, like, look at Keanu Reeves. I think he's in his 60s, and he still looks like a, like he's in his, like, 40s or late 30s. So, like, you know, it is what it is. Early 40s or so. But, uh, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know what to think of the... Deadpool movie it might look entertaining for most and I understand that I get it but I'm looking at it in a sense of how Disney Disney is constructed and their track record I'm not looking at Deadpool as like the Merc with the mouth type stuff I'm not looking at Wolverine I'm looking at them writers and I'm looking at Bob Iger and the director of Marvel I don't trust any of them not the actors the directors and writers I don't trust them because they can't they can't write I have a paper bag half the time and they are very um uh what's the right word um disgruntled people they don't know how to take criticism at all not in the slightest so or be as close to the comics as possible seems to be so i don't trust them and that's just my take on that but you know Maybe they might pull something out of the, uh, uh, their booty cheeks and actually surprise and fix the MCU. Maybe I don't think that's the I don't think that's the goal. I think that goal is going to happen in Secret World Wars and just restart the whole MCU from that point. Because <laughs> they said they're bringing back Robert Downey Jr. So if if they're bringing back Robert Downey Jr. back to play Iron Man again, which they I think they pretty much confirmed it yesterday when we watched it, that tells me that the the Deadpool movie is not focusing on fixing the problems or making fun of a lot like what they did in Avengers Endgame where they went back in time and then took all the uh, the stones and stuff. I don't think they're going to do the same thing similar to what they'll do in Deadpool. I think it's just going to be a bunch of jokes laughs. They're going to run through a bunch of like different world variants and something like that and just make fun of everyone and then probably find the same replacement for Wolverine for the MCU somewhere down the line. Maybe. Or maybe that will happen in Secret Wars. Not sure. And I think if possible. I don't think Hugh Jackman's um, cameo as Wolverine. Is going to be the only cameo there. Other than the X-Men. I think they're also going to probably bring Peter Parker in there. Uh, probably either between Andrew Garfield or Tom uh, Tobey Maguire. Might be in it. I, I have this feeling that they're going to be in it in some form. I could be wrong. I'm not saying that's a confirmation that's going to happen, but I just have that feeling because what Disney's going to try to do is try to hold off as best as they can to get the Secret Wars as fast as possible. So <clears throat> the best way to in, to make enough of a profit from this movie is have Ryan Reynolds, have Hugh Jackman, throw Tobey Maguire in there for nostalgic reasons, just for shits and giggles. Just to hold off them Spider-Man fans because I think they're still trying to figure out what they're going to do with Peter Parker since the whole change and everything with the John Jonathan Majors and the whole nine. So I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen. If I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. But that's just my take on that. That's what I'm assuming. That's my spec. Um, my uh, me speculating on. But you know, you never know. But I don't think it's going to be made to fix anything. I think it's going to do quite the opposite. I think it's just trying to hold you over till they get to Secret Wars. I think Secret Wars is where it's going to fix. 
And if this movie bombs, I'm pretty sure next next movie will be Secret War Wars and down that line, maybe. I'm not sure. Or Secret Wars, you won't hear another movie from Marvel till like a new year from now. Oh, it's so bad. There's like this giant guy. He looks like Jason. And I didn't even get it at first. Apparently that was Hollow's Eve and she takes the mask off when she sees Chasm. I thought maybe that was Chasm and she took the mask off of him. I wasn't even really sure. It's not really apparent, even though the art is very good. The script itself sucks, so it was hard to make it apparent what was happening. Later, she puts on another mask and turns into a wolf. I don't even remember that being part of the character. And Chasm just, like, shows up. He wants to make out with her. Like, why do you keep doing this to my boy here? You know, he's the clone of freaking Peter Parker. Ben Riley deserves more. He looks like Venom. He's basically D-list Venom at this point. They even gave him all of Venom's original, like, motivations and all that kind of stuff. And he's just Venom light at this point. Why don't you just put Dylan Mulvaney on a fucking commercial for <laughs> Chasm and Hollow Z? I really think the character is even worse than what oh, shit. Wells and stuff. It's just, uh... Damn. If, you, if you haven't noticed, I'm very frustrated with with uh, Amazing Spider-Man, I'm very frustrated with Marvel, I'm very frustrated with Zeb Wells, I'm very frustrated with Nick Lowe, I'm very frustrated with great artists like Ed McGinnis and Todd Knock being wasted on stories that nobody has an interest in, because perhaps after the issue comes up, people will be selling the stupid first appearance of the Spider Goblin for $52 on eBay. The problem is nobody will be reading the fucking book because he is so tired of this <laughs> story <that> nobody <laughs> this is the ever actually this is the read. most i hear him curse so he you know he's tired of this shit <laughs> that's how i feel about it i'm not holding anything back yeah i can one. i can tell just, uh, i'm a little bit pissed off but that's fine Dude, like more coverage <laughs> this is the most Spider-Man i ever hear him curse comics and dc comics and all the sins the entire comic book industry that's pissing me off more and more by the day you do need to go to the Thinking Critical Patreon, where we do have lots of fun stuff, and I'm probably not going to be quite as frustrated as I am right here, right now. But we'll definitely be talking about this uh, with Doc, with Aaron Sparrow, <sighs> because this is an idea so spectacularly stupid, I've got to discuss it with everybody, because I want to have as many opinions on this and why it's it's the dumbest idea, perhaps, in the history of Marvel Comics, period. If you haven't checked out Thinking Critical Patreon, there's a link in the video description. All right, so that was Doc. I mean, Doc. That was West on the whole Spider-Man debacle. We went on a whole rant. I feel bad for him. I know how he feels going on a rant. So it is what it is. So like, share, share, follow, come and give him a follow and all that great stuff. So I'll see you guys in the next one. All right. Now it's here at Clownfish TV. It says here. Uh, okay, I'll look at it in a second. Uh, Disney gives away Disney Plus again. Star Wars isn't profitable. <sighs> okay. I will do your um I'll look at it and give you what I need what you need after this video. It's only 16 minutes from now. Hopefully you can hold off by then. You can cut and jump over here. Just to let you know, Ari, right, I'm on Facebook again. Um so yeah. Let's see what's going on here with Disney Plus. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And it's time for another daily dose of Dismal Disney. We're going to talk about Disney inking another deal with Verizon for free Disney streaming bundles. Yes, right? and it goes for six months, guys, which happens to take you to the end of the fiscal year and into the beginning of next year. So they'll, they'll have these numbers counted towards the promises they made about profitability and streaming numbers by the end of the year. Yeah, so this is this is some more uh, hokey pokey. We're, and speaking of which, we're also going to talk about Star Wars Forbes coming out and backing up uh, speculation on our part from, God, a couple weeks ago when they dropped that white paper saying that they made three times back what they spent. Turns out, no, they, they really didn't. And this was all about just, I think, uh, bullshitting the normies who have Disney stock, what do they call them? The, the consumer investors, uh, the retail I call investors, them the pixie dusters, the pixie dusters, right? The people that just buy Disney stock and they have no other stock, and they were the ones who kept the board intact. This is about bullshitting them, but now they're going to have to pay the piper. Oh, and then there's layoffs at Marvel too. So oh, there's layoffs at Marvel. We got all kinds of stuff. It's, it's a summary of Disney. It's a it's a cornucopia of 
terrible Disney news. A cornucopia of crap. There you go. Is that what we're going to talk about? Crapacopia. Crapacopia. Disney. Oh, that's, that should be the name of their new theme park. Disney's. Crapacopia. Crapacopia Adventure. The crap adventure. All right. So before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, yeah, woo if you do. Woohoo. Uh, it's coming from the Hollywood Reporter. Ver uh, Verizon Inc.'s deal for free Disney streaming bundle for some unlimited customers. Right. So basically what it is is Verizon already offers the Disney streaming bundle for $10 a yeah. month, which is $5 cheaper than it is, you know, Disney already. So now they're going to give new and current Verizon customers six free months of the bundle when they switch to the plans. And after that, it'll cost you $10 per month again. So you switch, you get the free six months, and then you're back to pay the $10 they were already paying them. Uh, right after the six months is up when it would give Disney the numbers. Yeah. So they did this at the beginning when they launched Disney Plus 2 to get a boost. They Yeah, they mentioned that. If you go down here, it's interesting. They said that right here. Go back up a little bit. Verizon has been particularly aggressive about its plans to bundle streaming services in a bid to lock in customers and has partnered with Disney before. Most notably, Verizon was a launch partner for Disney Plus, giving many of its customers one free year of the service and helping Disney Plus gain substantial market share early on. Yeah, so they're like, look, they're coming up against the deadline. They got to make this thing profitable or at least look profitable or look like it has a future. And we had, you know, the video we did yesterday, they talked about how they're going to add basically linear television, linear cable to Disney Plus. They're going to have streaming channels, mm -hmm. you know, and that's probably another it's gonna perk. Be Tubi. It's going to be Tubi. Basically, it's going to be Mickey. They should put a little eye on the end of it there. But um, yeah, they're they're doing everything they can do because, look, they have hit a ceiling. And we've talked about this with Netflix and the streaming wars. Like, you've only got so many people that are willing to pay so much per month for, like, freaking 19 different streaming services. And yes, there are. There's I, like I'm 19 telling or 20. you, the worst thing in a long-term way, most of these companies are going to suffer, Disney and them. It was best, they they were better off, all of these companies was better off, all of them was better off just staying on Netflix payroll to put their stuff on, pay, on Netflix. It was just better off. The money was, the money was coming, right? They had the share, but then the money was coming, right? People was going to watch their shit. It was all in one place. That was the point of Netflix for majority of people who didn't want cable no more because the cable was supposed to stop the, the point of going to Netflix was to avoid the commercials, avoid the, um, I have to remember to Tebow something or record your favorite show. You know what I'm saying? Or, or, or anything close to that. Right. If there was a season. If, if there was a show, the whole season sat right there on the day one. Right. If all these movie, if all these companies just went back to Netflix, things will be much easier for everyone. Everyone can be just on one streaming service. They'll watch your Disney's, they'll watch your HBO's, they'll watch your Warner Brothers stuff. Oh, that HBO and Warner Brothers. They'll watch your CW shit. They, I think that's under the same brother too. They'll watch your, uh, your. If they had sports, ESPN. I, if Netflix went down sports, it would have been the Hulu as well. Um. You know, it just, it is what it is, right? It is what it is. But because every other company had to be greedy just to prove they could, now they're suffering major losses at this point. So what, what they should do is just go back to Netflix, but they won't do it because, well, we're too prideful in ourselves to admit that we're wrong. So they'll they'll never do it. They'll die on that hill before they even do anything close to that, right? Um it was better off because remember the pay for Netflix back then was like what five dollars a month. Uh, I think at first it started at like three ninety nine a month, technically four dollars. I think it was three ninety nine a month, and then it it raised a little bit to five dollars. I think directly just five dollars, and then that's where it started getting worse. That's right after that five dollar hitch went up a little bit. That's when all these streaming services started real or these companies started realizing. We can do that too, right? And then once they figured that out, that's when all hell broke loose for Netflix, and they lost majority of their 
best show well not best shows but their back catalog of shows that people could just go and watch like the friends the seinfelds the king and queens the everyone loves raymond everyone hates chris uh you know all these different shows uh the, the cartoon network shows the disney shows you know i'm saying it had all the shows where you could just find what you wanted and that was it right now it's like you have to go to several different streaming services just to get the shows you wanted in hopes that they have it. Because if you want to watch, like, say, let me use an example. If you want to watch, like, um, Vampire Diaries on Netflix, you only get, I think, seasons three through, like, I think, six. You don't get seasons one, two, and three. I think. I don't know. No, no. It'll be three seasons four to six. Like, you only get two seasons, but they're off from four to six. You don't have one, two, three, four, and five. You only get, like, two seasons because they have the license to those seasons. But the other services have the license to probably one and two. Another one has, like, three, four, and five. You know what I'm saying? It just, It's just so frustrating to the point, like, what is the point? Because after a while, you start realizing this this tends to pile up real fast and ultimately now you're just you're just paying for cable with extra steps at this point it, you're better off being back on cable you know what i'm saying like usually one flat fee you don't have to pay for if you're getting commercial or not the commercials already baked into the shows that you're paying for now you're just paying for the channels at this point right because most people are not paying for the channels on these streaming servers you're paying for the shows that you want at this point with commercials if you're paying in a low budget situation now what what this made for most people is the haves and have nots at this point that's what what these streaming services these su these subscription based uh companies or methods have made these uh have and have nots because you can't pay for so if if you only can make like you you can, enough to pay for like four dollars a month you're gonna get a bunch of commercials up the wazoo to the point it's going to annoy you if you pay for the highest thing, you may not get commercials or you may get one commercial. I've been seeing this thing where premium now is not even no commercials. It's either you get a commercial or there's no commercials. You get a commercial. And that's weird. That's strange. Why am I paying premium for? I'm going to get a commercial. Ain't that the point of the premium, you know, package? No, it's like other things that they tried to chip you in to to stay like it's it, it's 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 sad it's it's frustrating and it's annoying you know what i'm saying so i understand where neon is coming from with this it's just like it's it, it you guys were the majority of them was better off hey there did i miss anything crazy oh no we're just talking about the streaming services um i don't think so not anything that i can think of um but yeah so ultimately i think to save the to to for the streaming wars, I think they should just give up. Give up on trying to compete with Netflix. Streaming services out there, are probably more than that, but of the ones that, that that matter, and people are like, yeah, I can't afford this. It costs more than cable. It costs yes. more than direct TV. I just said this it. is having to combine things. They still can't compete with Netflix. So, I mean, they're trying to do whatever they can do to take from other streaming platforms to see what they can, you know, pick and choose, cherry pick the things they want to, tr to try, throw spaghetti against the wall, as Peltz put it, to see what sticks. But Verizon, they went back to the tried and true well here where they've done it before. We need a lot of subscribers. We're going to offer bundles. Yep. Um, Verizon will pay us for it so we can count it as paid. Because mm -hmm. Verizon will use it to leverage, deal, leverage you know, plans and, and uh, bundles for themselves, yep. as well as give Disney what they want. Disney has a promise they made to shareholders for their streaming services. Now I don't think they're just saying Disney Plus now, um, and numbers, and that's coming, and that's coming due in a, in a few months. Yep. So let's give it to them for six months free. As soon as they sign up, people are going to sign up for six months, and they're going to count it throughout the end of the year as a subscriber. Well, it's not like anybody's going to lose their job over this, right? If they don't hit those numbers. Yeah, I know, right? Because it's like, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, guys. This is, this is, uh, seems very desperate. There's definitely some panic. And I don't, I don't see how 
unless they start fudging the numbers that they can look profitable by the end of the year when they've spent as much as they spend the content. And we know that people are actually quitting Disney plus because there's not enough new content there. Well, what they're going to do is they're going to take these people to sign up for this. And then they're going to put those numbers into their charter spectrum numbers and all those other numbers that they keep getting bundles out there for, which yeah. I told you they weren't going to lose on that. No nope. contrary. What people said, and they're going to leverage that for advertising dollars. And they're going to use that money to pump in. People are lowering blood sugar day after day by following a simple 10 second ritual before bed. To it to say that's profitable. Yeah. So that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get more subscribers so they can upcharge advertisers, shove more ads in them. You're going to probably see more so they can say at the end, oh, look, we hit our profitability numbers. And that's probably what they're going to do, which I've been telling you that they're doing this. So let's talk about moving some numbers around. Uh, oh, yes. Yes. Let's talk about the white paper. Yeah. Let's talk about Star Wars. So this is the article. It's out on Forbes and they basically take Lucasfilm to task, take uh, Disney to task for its acquisition. And, uh, you know, we showed you this before. You know, yeah, this, we this talked about here. this before. I read the fine print. And, and it, it is the really fine print. nebulous and weird. And what they're saying is that, yeah, they might have made back three times in revenue of what they spent for Lucasfilm. But that's not factoring the costs of the making the new stuff, mm -hmm. you know? So it's kind of like, I mean, they did this again, just to trick the pixie duster investors into thinking, well, look, they handled star Wars. Great. The article actually spends a lot of time talking about how decimated star Wars is that it's not in a good place right now that a lot of, you know, the expense that Disney has put into star Wars, it hasn't yielded results. They talk about the merchandise sales being way down. Um, they talk, well, yeah, and it, it's true though about the not having results. I mean, like the toys is, I think, do well. And I think Disney, if they were pushing the corner, they'd start, they would go down to the fact that, well, this percentage of sales of tickets, you know, at Disneyland yeah. and, and at Hollywood Studios is for Star Wars, we'll count that money and everything else. Um, but it's not doing as well as what they're trying to spin it, so which we brought up before when we covered the white paper. Hollywood accounting. They're, they're going to take. We said then. It was Hollywood yeah, accounting, which we said then too. So it's, it's like basically Hollywood accounting. Like you can you can massage the numbers and Disney is very, very good at this. This is why the SEC was getting involved, you know, with the whistleblower. But but you can either make things look as good or as bad as possible. If, if you don't want to pay taxes you make things look dire. Like, oh my God, guys, we can't even keep the lights well, on. that would be interesting. I would love to see if they have a different story on the taxes than they do on this. Uh, yeah. That would, be, that would be really interesting. We're never going to see that, but that would be an interesting look. Yeah, because if, if you say, hey, we made you know, $4 billion in profits, the IRS is like, oh boy, oh Hollywood boy. Accounting. You know, it's like, oh no, no, we lost money. We we definitely lost. But I mean, look, they've spent but not on here are the white people. We made money. Yeah. <laughs> the, to 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 keep the board in place. Keep the board in place. But like, yeah, they're saying that the the merchandise sales, you gotta factor that into it. But you have to factor in too all the the massive duds. And I think it's great because they actually show definitively that solo lost money. And that's one thing that's been, you know, up for debate. Everybody's like, oh, solo did fine. It did just fine. You know, it made uh, you know, somebody thinks that if you spend $150 million on a movie and it makes $151 million at the box office, that's not a lot that you made a million dollars profit. I'm no, like, dumbass. I, I have yeah. to take a moment no, to, no, you didn't. To, to, I love Caroline Reed's returns. No, of the you did not. Returns of the Jedi. I, I, I pre let, let, let me hear what he's just said. I, I have yeah. to you know, somebody thinks that if you spend $150 million on a movie, and okay, 150 a hundred and fifty mil, and it makes a hundred and fifty one million dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not a win, bro. That's not a win. If you made a hundred, he's right. A hundred fifty mil. If you, if you made a hundred, if you spent a hundred fifty million on your movie and it only made a hundred fifty one million, you made one million dollars profit. That is not a win. That is a major loss. You're supposed to get at least five to ten times what, back what you made, what you spent. It's it's like okay, it's like uh, if I remember right, the dude who made the was it the witch the Witch Blair series? I think it was a group of them, but the dude who made the Witch Blair series, or yeah, they the the found footage uh, genre. They I think they're the ones who started that, and then it became the supernatural. Uh, I don't know if it's the same people or maybe they just copied them. I don't, I'm not really sure. But the point is, is that 
with the Weir- Blair Witch uh, series. The dude had a camera, right? Just a basic camcorder, right? I think if I remember right. And just basic equipment. I think it cost him $10,000. I think the movie cost him $10,000 when he made it. 10000 The movie made, I think, $50 million. He got a he got a hundred times back what he even even got from that movie. That's a profit, and some change. I think it made fifty million dollars. Wait, let me look that up. Hold on, I'll I'll even prove it to you. So I think I remember that from that inter- that interview. I hit the thing. Let me see. Um. Uh, let me see if I can do this from here. Maybe I can show it. Take me to Google. How much? How much? Oh. No, no, we're not doing this. We're not doing this. We're not doing this. We're not doing this. Why? No, we're not doing this. How much money? did the Blair which first movie oh I was oh that was more than I said I said 50 million it was 250 million the first movie made despite having a short filming budget of 35 to 60 only 35 to 60 thousand dollars on the Blair Witch project it was thirty-five to sixty. Let's just round it Darth up. Darth That's a lot of money. Honestly, that was a good movie for its time. Yeah, it was. And the fact that the movie was between thirty-five to sixty. Let's just say it was around fifty thousand. I'll say fifty thousand dollars. They made two thousand five hundred million dollars off that. That is a major win. So when anyone says here. Or you hear that they spent say a hundred if 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 Disney made a hundred million, and the movie only made, uh, if they spent a hundred million on a on a movie, and the movie made one hundred and ten million, they only made ten million profit. That is not a win. You're supposed to get five times as bad, or at least three to five times more than you actually made from your spending budget because remember out of that 10 million you have to pay back all the people that worked on it you gotta pay back all the the marketing fees you have to pay back all the other fees if it goes international as well there's a bunch of fees in that that you a lot of people don't take account for most normies who don't know this so like if it didn't make it for this to be a profit, you have to make at least more. So if if they made a hundred million, if they spent a hundred million and they made two hundred million, they made a hundred million profit. They actually just, they just, they just made just enough to pay back all their people and have some some change back. But they didn't have a lot to the point that it's like five hundred, like four hundred million to uh four like four hundred million, five hundred million, or at least a, close to a, a a billion. You know what I'm saying? So like let's just use the Mario movie. How how much money did it did it did it take to make the Mario movie? It was a hundred million dollars. That it took, according to two sources, it says according to two sources, it took at least a hundred million dollars to make the Mario movie, and it came back with a one point three four, a one point three billion dollar profit, and it scored another one hundred seventy three million at the international box office. 
CJ, worldwide. Worldwide, it made $1 billion. Pushing its economy to $3 million, it carries to the... I think a perfect example of this is the five nine. How much, how much, oops, how much money did it take to make the five Five Nights at Freddy's movie? It was only two million. I mean, twenty million. My bad. It took twenty million to make the Five Nights of Freddy's movie. Roughly twenty million, right? And box office wise, it says here that the Five Nights movie has now cleared more than twenty million. It it made two hundred million, or at least two hundred fifty million, in the box office. So it made back their money. It was twenty million to make it, and it took, and they made two hundred fifty million. So that's a that was a profit. That was a win. But a lot of young people don't know how this works. They they think, oh, that's a lot of money. They'll make another one. No, it's not. It's not a lot of money. Sadly. Was at the box office that you made a million dollars profit. I'm like, dumbass. I, I have yeah. to take a moment to, 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 I love Caroline Reed's Returns of the Jedi. Returns of the Jedi. I, I, I appreciate that a lot, actually. I have to give her credit for that one. That one's pretty funny. But it shows that, yeah. So that was, I guess, Box Office Mojo. That was that. her source for the chart. Uh, okay, yeah. yeah. So I, yeah. Give, I give Box Office Mojo credit for the calling it Returns of the Jedi, because that's hilarious. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the Solo lost ninety million dollars when you factored in, but wasn't Darth the most Bora expensive Korn. movie. Now, Rise of Skywalker. So saying you made ten million back is like a child holding up a piece of macaroni art, like it belongs in the Smithsonian. Correct. Depending on what your budget was, it really depends on your budget. If if your your budget should never be, you shouldn't make the two things you should never do is make less than your your spending but your spending budget, or you just make just over just a little over your spending budget you should make three the i think four four to five times more than what you made than what you spent so you have a you have a profit enough to pay your workers pay everyone pay the marketing fees pay the 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 all that digital more everything the advertisements and everything if you did do any of that and if i remember right i don't even think the blair witch the first movie even had advertising I don't think so. I think it was one of just those movies people just stumbled upon out of just pure luck, I think. I don't think it had a bunch of, like, um, uh, uh, I don't think it had anything close to that at all. So that one makes it kind of funny. You got to realize, too, they probably used a lot of the, the props and the startup costs and stuff like that, too. And we saw that with, with Solo and with Rogue One, like a lot of the same aliens and stuff. They mm -hmm. would use them because they're like, oh, yeah, we got all these. Yeah. So it's like, why are they using all these new Disney aliens that they came up with in the four? Again. It's not safe. I can't let you go. Force Awakens and all these movies. I'm like, yeah, because they got the costumes laying around. You know, they I still just... don't understand how Disney made more profit than they're spending on Last Jedi because that thing was, a, was dog shit. I it didn't make as much as the Force Awakens. But you know what? Here's the thing about Solo too. I want to point out the Last Jedi. Okay, it fell off a cliff after the first couple of weeks. People boycotted Solo because they were mad about the Last Jedi. Yes. So you're seeing that, and they're not. What they're not telling you in this chart is that a lot of the, the losses on Solo, besides the fact people were like, "What is this?" It has to do with the fact that people were boycotting it after the Last Jedi. Yeah. And then you see the, the massive losses basically on the ride Rise of Skywalker compared to what they spent because at that point they ticked everyone off and nobody came. Yeah, I, to this day, I still have not watched that movie. Nope, I have not either. I, I've seen parts of it on YouTube and I'm like, God, this is like a parody of Star Wars. Like, this is really cringy. I have no desire. And what kind of blew my mind about that too was like The Force Awakens they made such a big deal about how they're going to use all practical effects. And then the scenes I've seen in the Rise of Skywalker were like super CGI heavy. And it looked very, very fakey. Like in some ways, it looked f you know, more fake than the prequels. That's saying something. But they that talk about they something. talk about how they kind of uh, you know used UK tax credits. They've and all been. This. They did it for the Marvels too. We've talked about that a few times. Yeah, they've been doing that. So it's like I mean, look, they're 
from it's true from a certain point of view. I think if you've (laughs) given all the data, people can make this. You could argue it was it made it made its money back. But 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 the different set of data, you could definitely show that it they're still in the hole. It's like you're never given a complete kind of picture of it. Yeah, and they're bringing up about Willow and Indiana Jones. That's part of Lucas film too. Like Nobody talks they, about they that. They don't account for that. No. When they're talking about the Star Wars, they bought Lucasfilm, and no one, and they're not mentioning the fact about how much money they lost and how they had to cancel Willow, and they pretty much ruined the brand because of their stupidity for Disney Plus. Yeah, that's the thing. They are not mentioning that they just bought Star Wars. Just Star Wars, but that was only part of what they bought. Well, even the Avengers, like they're basically, you know. But they're not doing Marvel. They're saying Marvel. Marvel right? Studios Avengers, but they're, oh, yeah, they're focused on the Avengers discussion. only because Avengers yeah. campus. Okay. Now this is uh, so this is really are... now this is um, Disney's you know own things. They're whatever, only but... using those ones because those are the ones they're using in the park. They're using park heavy. Yeah, everything's that's why Avengers. They, they focused on that. Uh, everything is Lucasfilm, and then it's like okay, it's all Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. Yeah, they're not saying hey look, uh, Indiana Jones bombed. Oh hey look, Willow bombed so bad that we had to pull it off a of, of Disney Plus. No, because they're focused on, they bought Lucasfilm, but they're saying Star Wars. They bought Marvel, but they're saying Avengers, you know? All like of these, Pixar, all these shows. But they're just mentioning Toy Story. Yeah, because that's Toy Story Lance in the park, right? That's right, because par- they're, they're park related. That's why. Yeah, so they want to show the brand synergy and all that. But, like, it's it's not good. Like, again, it's Hollywood accounting. They needed to razzle-dazzle the investors to make them think that they knew what the hell they were doing. But any idiot can look at Star Wars in particular and look at Lucasfilm and be like, they dropped the ball harder on this one than they did anything else. Like, they just have not gotten this right since the start. Plus, they bring up, too, about the theater. Like, the totals are that, but you have to remember theaters take a big cut of it, too, and they don't mention that. Like, it made $1.7 billion, yes. How much did you actually make? Because the theaters took their cut. And I, well, I'm, I'm sure if you look at information and data, depending if they count theme parks, depending if they count merchandise and green milk and blue milk sales and, you know, yeah. all that, I'm sure if you account for all that, you might be able to, to, to look like they maybe made their money back with tax credits and everything else. But it doesn't mean that they're actually making money. It doesn't mean that they legitimately did make their money back per se. It's just that they're just going to massage the data to make it appear that way. Yeah, I, I could totally see. I, I could totally see Disney. Being like, okay, let's take the uh, price of admission to Hollywood Studios and and every person went to Hollywood Studios. Okay, like, you know, 15, 20 percent of that ticket is going to Star Wars or Lucasfilm stuff because, you know, they did Indiana Jones and they did Rise of the Resistance and just getting in the gate. Mm-hmm. And they kind of do that with Harry Potter. How much of the park is, is, is Star Wars now? It's probably like, what, a, a third of it? Because you have the you have Star Tours. Yeah. There's a little bit of Muppets. And then you go into Galaxy Edge, it goes around the whole backside, wraps around to the other side. It's probably like a quarter to a third of the park. I am surprised. I thought they were actually going to connect Star Tours to Galaxy's Edge. That would have been much better. I don't know what they were thinking. Just bulldoze the Muppets completely. Or just make something Star Wars there, too, and make it wrap around, but they didn't. They could have made that. They could have made it. It was weird. Like, you know, oh my God, turn into Canto Bite or something. Like Disney's magical Star Wars gambling adventure. Well, they have. They, they put the Muppets and everything. They just could make it Muppet Star Wars, and then they could have gone the Muppet Star Wars. And then just hey, they own Family thing. Guy now. Um, but do, but, family you know, guy, do Family Guy. Do Family Guy. They're going like Family Guy banners and Futurama. Take your picture with Futurama set. Oh over my in god! Disney Springs right now. It's this is like an, this is literally that episode of The Simpsons where they go to the the Disney theme park, and it's just like it's ridiculous. Well, speaking of Marvel, we'll talk about this real quick. Yeah, we have to go somewhere. Um, also, Marvel had a 15-person layoff just yeah. yesterday. Now, it's both in Burbank at Marvel Studios and Marvel Entertainment in New York. They're saying the ones at Burbank were junior employees in production development at Marvel Studios. And it's because they're reassessing or redirect, reducing. It's because Bob Iger said they were canceling a bunch of crap that wasn't going to work. Yep. So there's that. And over at the comic end in, in New York, they said after they got rid of Perlmutter, they were like getting rid of redundancies or something, and they got rid of some people there. So they got rid of 15 people at Marvel. It wasn't a massive layoff, like some people were saying. Yeah. But it was, they're definitely cutting. You, well, I think they need to cut back to profitability. They, you know, they need, need to make good movies. They need to make, good I comics mean, and... they're better off with one or two good Marvel movies a year and one good Star Wars every three to five years than they are just, but the thing is, is that you have to feed that machine, right? When you're, you're a public company like Disney and you've put everything into these, these franchises, these IP, and you are you clearly can't make anything new. You got to just keep going back to that well and you hope to God it doesn't run out of water. And you know, Disney really, really should do is just go through and call a bunch of shows 
They're not working. They should. If they have a bunch of shows that are just, just you know, you're, you're putting them out there for accolades and not because they're actually bringing it, you need to cut them. You yeah. need to cut these shows. You need to cut these comics. You need to cut these, you know, movies. And they sound like they're doing some, but they aren't doing enough, I don't think. And that same with Star Wars. So we'll see what happens moving forward. But if you're going to bank on more race shit, you're, you might as well just put put a whole, dig a hole and throw Star Wars in it at this point. Oh, because yeah. that's yeah. what's going to happen. So... Yep, so there we go, guys. More uh, Disney Disney accounting magic. That's, that's the most magical thing at Disney yeah, right now. Yeah, the accounting, yes. They're accounting. So we're going to wrap it up. Mm-hmm. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk later. <sighs> Bye. All right, so that was pretty much the whole Disney debacle problem. You know, Disney doing it. How it Disney's. So with that said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Like I said, I share, follow, and comment. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Hmm. Oh, yeah, and follow Clownfish. Hmm. All right. Um, Ari, are you still here? If you're not, I'm going to move on to the next video. Mmm. Yes. I'll give her two minutes to respond. If she does not respond, I'll move on to the next video. Gotta get these videos out of the way. Beanbag. Beep. Oh, let's see if he's there. Beep. Oh. Ari's not responding. Ari's not responding. That means we'll go to the next video. All right, so this one is from Edemion. So we already know about the whole um, uh, Warhammer problem. We already talked about that with... I forgot who we was listening to from yesterday. But um, this one's a little different because even though he's going to mention Warhammer, he's also going to mention the Harry... Bean bag. Can't. Not even two minutes. Uh, yeah, but she usually responds pretty fast. Uh, I, I don't have time to waste. Um. So Henry Beanbag. Cavill's um. But all right, lol. Amazon. I know it wasn't really two minutes, but it was what this. She usually responds within seconds, but it's like uh, I can't sit there and wait. Um. So pretty much. Uh. This is Endymion. Uh. It says mass exodus on fans reject Warhammer 4K. Oh, 40K. Uh, new woke agenda plus Henry Cavill's Amazon series is doomed. Uh, that sucks. I That's what got me to actually listen to this instead of listening to it twice because I didn't want to listen to this story twice. I don't like listen to a story twice unless it has like real updates. But this is technically an update because even though we already listened about the whole Warhammer debacle yesterday, the issue is that Angela Robbins, the movie. Teach I can join back in 5 to 10 minutes. Um, well, that'll give us time to go through this this video. So yeah, go ahead. All right. So with that said, let's go. Essentially ostracizing their own community. Oh, let's and go throwing. Back, What's up, everyone? It's Endymion, and I was resting yesterday, taking a day off, when suddenly, like always, the internet implodes while I'm sipping coffee in my underwear. Turns out, one of the last bastions of hope against the mind virus has not only been Thank infiltrated you. but completely upended. It seems. This brings us to Warhammer 40k, which has just committed financial self-deletion on their own part by essentially ostracizing their own community, and throwing the lore of this legendary property into the woke paper shredder. Let's start with this article from Bounding Into Comics, which is titled, Games Workshop Makes Insulting Retcon to Warhammer 40k Lore, Claims All Male Adeptus Cadre Faction Has Always Featured Female Members. So, this all started when Games Workshop, which owns the 40k property, showcased I don't see the video. product on Twitter. Then a user said, You don't see the video. Beanbag. Oh wait, now I do NVM. Oh. This. Why side. did you make female custodes? To which, in one tweet, Games Workshop cost themselves millions in response by saying, Since the first of the 10,000 were created, yeah. there have always been female custodians. And just like that, dear viewer, the gates of chaos were opened, and thus did the nonsense spill uncontrollably since. Uh oh. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I am not a master of Warhammer 40k lore. I am going special- to be, yes, I'm going to be very clear. I I don't know anything about lore and for uh, a Warhammer. I think my girlfriend knows more about Warhammer than I do. I'm just being dead honest on that. From the video games, she plays the board game. She doesn't even play the video games. I don't think she has played the video games, but she has played the board games with her friends. Um, I was thinking of playing with her one day, but I just never got around doing it. But um, I have no idea what lore is Bean there bag. when it comes to... It, what it is even. 
um, to 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 uh, Warhammer. I don't know what it, it is even. It's a it's like a it's a space marine type sci-fi story slash it could be a is a video games. I know there's a several video games that is a RTS. It could be a RTS game, meaning real time strategy game. Um, Raiga Samurai. Yeah, I'm kind of lost too. Like I don't know anything about it, but the one thing I do know is that. When a franchise is touched, whether it's Avatar, The Last Airbender, uh, Star Wars, Marvel, Beanbag. any anime, okay. once it's touched by the idea of DEI, I suggest even if you don't know what the hell this, this thing is, you should pay close attention to this because um, if you have a favorite franchise that you like, you can look for the signs of when they're trying to wokeify your show or your thing or whatever case may be, whether you're part of the LGBT or not. You have to look visually at this because if, because it's easy for them to infiltrate your franchises that you enjoy, like Treasure Planet for one, or like your uh, Dragon Ball or anything like that. Because since the, I, since Kira, Kiri, um, Akira Toriyama's gone. There's so much that the Japan and Toy will do till they walk down that DEI line, and then that's where all hell will break loose from that point. So, like, might as well be familiar with these terms and these things happening now. So, whenever this thing ever infiltrates your franchise, you don't support it, and it'll die off, and then they'll go back to what it is. Because once you start supporting it, even the slightest, even in for more than a, a year, it's going to go left. Teach, would you play D&D one day? I would play D&D because the girlfriend plays that too. She plays both Warhammer and D&D with her friends. So I think I would. I think there's an online version of D&D you can play um, online with friends. You don't have to be like physically near them. I, I forgot. I think it's called Tabletop something. It was it was being advertised on YouTube a while back where you can play your favorite D&D &D games with your friends online, or a case may be, and I guess you can stream it, or a case may be. I don't, I don't know how it works, but, you know, it's pretty much that. But, yeah, I, I can see myself doing that in time or so. But, yeah. Reality lies more so with franchises like Final Fantasy or Mass Effect. Personally. Darth Goricorn. But I do know enough. I, I sent you the short fun non serious parody movie trailer from yesterday via Discord. All right. What the hell is going on here? I'll play after this. Warhammer, in case you don't know, has a lot of lore within it, which is putting it lightly. And there are entire books that are filled to the brim with lore dating back years on all the races and wars that have been brewing since the property's inception. There's orcs, there's genetically modified superhumans, there's even an entire dimension where basically chaos reigns supreme. It's a weird property for sure, but that's also what makes it really cool. The thing is that people obviously believe that lore is important when it comes to a property and their right. And of course, when you're in charge of such a massive IP like this, you are expected to respect canon, which in turn means you respect your audience. Too which massive. obviously pays for all the stuff your IP makes so that you can continue existing. This is basic economics. Yet like Star Wars, Marvel, and more, Warhammer has now gone down the same path. And in early January 2024, in one of my videos where I covered Henry Cavill's Warhammer Amazon series, I said that the fr fucking commercials. franchise has the potential to overtake even Star Wars in terms of brand recognition if they respect the source material. But this is a big blow, not going to lie. So what exactly is going on here? Why can't there be female characters within this certain faction? Well, let's look into that now. Grums, who's a friend of the channel, is a big Warhammer nerd. He's been collecting figurines and everything from that IP for decades at this point. He got really mad, and thankfully, he has some convenient pieces of lore that explain this, which says, The Adeptus Custodes Spubbly is the Mio Emperor's has. inner guard, the Hello. members of which are privileged in being permitted to serve upon the Emperor, attending to his needs, receiving and recording his directions. These men never leave Earth and only rarely leave the Imperial Palace, an endless black hive of forbidden technology and subterranean passages delving deep within the bowels of the planet. So from this one lore excerpt, we can see that the Custodes are definitely stated to be male only when they are chosen to become Custodes. By the way, in case you don't know who the Emperor is, he's basically a super godlike man that all of humanity answers to. 
and protecting him is priority number one over literally everything else. If the adept custodians, lol, you look like we're falling asleep. No, that's just the fucking Abby being like that. We still got adjusted. The emperor resided, or another planet that was full of billions of people. They would abandon those billions to die in order to save the emperor. He is essentially their god. Everything they do is to protect him and they will all die in their line of duty before even a hair on his head is touched by someone wishing harm onto him. Warhammer is knocking futz basically, but there's more lore like here where it says in the old books of lore, It is known that all custodians begin their lives as the infant sons of the noble houses of Terra. It is a mark of incredible prestige to surrender one's child to this most glorious of callings within the Imperium and many notable clans amongst the Terran aristocracy have willingly given up almost entire generations of newborn sons to earn it. So yet again, the old books of lore confirm that the Custodes are essentially, for lack of a better way of explaining it, they're the Spartans in the 40k universe, essentially. And as we Makes know, sense. Spartans in Greek culture could only ever be men, even if Ubisoft tried to bend that with Assassin's Creed Odyssey. There has never been female custodians within the 40k universe or lore. And basically Mielhoff. attempting to push the notion XD, that there you're has watching been a video of Warmer, no wonder it sounded familiar. Fans. If someone mm. in that universe tried to say there were female custodes, the adeptists would just tear their limbs off and feed their corpse to the hounds for saying such blasphemous things. However, there's more to strengthen the argument that yet again the Adeptus Custodes were only men like here where it says The Bubbly Adeptus Mielhoff. Custodes are the Emperor's what personal made you want to watch this? millennia they have stood sentinel over the master of mankind and The reason I'm watching this is not because I want to get into for, uh, uh, of, uh, Darth Gorikorn okay. um, The Emperor is a worthless shell of a excuse of a man who does nothing but sits on a throne while people who deserve the title of Emperor get thrown into battle and die Yes, I'm Team Heretic <laughs> but um <laughs> but uh the reason i hear you darth um the the reason why i'm watching this is not because i want to get into this i, I you just came in seconds before i even explained this but i'm going to explain it twice the the reason why we're watching this is not because i want to be in warhammer or y'all should be in this it's the reason why is because DEI and ESG is a very intrusive invasive thing that keeps getting into virtually everything and anything Anything and everything. It doesn't matter. It's from My Little Pony to my to Avatar, the Airbender to Dragon Ball to whatever. Any franchise you can probably think of. The Mar. It already has infiltrated itself in Marvel, DC, and all these other things. IDW, uh, Dark Horse comics. You know, what I'm saying it has it has infiltrated itself in places that it should not be, or I don't think should have been welcome in the first place. But because there's too many of the activists and too many of these people trying to be in goodwill of being looking good. It's hard to get rid of it, but it's shadowy on it, gauntlets. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, but it's important to look for these things because you might be into, uh, into a, a favorite show or a video game or something like that. And if you start noticing like changes in a show that, you know, that seems too drastic for it to be a thing, for characters to say things that you know they normally wouldn't say or just tone of everything changing very directly it's because of things like Raiga this. Samurai. Um, High Shadow. And the only way to fix this type of problem is to refer is to avoid supporting things like this. It's to bring awareness that these type of things are too invasive, too intrusive and too problematic to for it to not be dealt with. So the best thing for the customer, you, the customer, whoever's listening to this, is to not support any of this nonsense if you have a favorite show, franchise, or a case may be. Now, there's nothing wrong with diversity, and there's nothing wrong for inclusion. But when it's forced and pandered, it is a problem. Because now you're just propping up because they exist, not because they are actually worthy of being such part of a, a, a Angela franchise. Robbins. Do you want me to join back later once the video is done? Yeah, I said that earlier. Yeah, I said that. Um, but yeah, I don't know anything about Warhammer, and I honestly don't care to know. It's just that I know my girlfriend plays it a lot. Um, I know that she plays it a lot with her friends, and I know she plays D&D &D with her friends. And I know Dr Dungeons & Dragons has been woke f as of recent for a good, I think, a year and a half now, probably a bit longer than that. But now Warhammer's getting that uh, DEI paint job. 
And now I'm only listening to this because we already, we already listened to this yesterday. We listened to this yesterday with the girlfriend calling in the other day. But now we're listening to this technically again because of the Henry Cavill part. I thought that it was going to touch the Warhammer thing because of the board game and stuff like that. Um, but it seems like it's being touched on all fronts, whether it's the movie version now that's coming out soon or the tabletop game, maybe the RTS as well. So the problem with this is that this is an infiltration of virtually everything. And they're now trying to rebrand DEI under, uh, instead of just saying ESG or DEI, they call it bridge now. I forgot what's the acronym for that term of that word is, but it is for that reason. And if you can pay attention to these things, you might avoid them and you won't be disappointed at least, or at least try not to support it as best as you can, or a case may be. Defended the gates of his palace. Yet now the emperor's blades are unsheathed, the 10,000 walk the stars in numbers not seen since the great crusade and woe betide those who oppose them. Yet again, this confirms what has already been said and gives more proof that essentially the custodes are Spartans and the emperor their Leonidas, if you will, or maybe even Zeus to be more accurate. These are the Emperor's chosen elite guards, human war machines that are genetically modified from birth to be groomed and bred to enact celestial vengeance upon the enemies of mankind. Basically, these are not the guys you want coming after you in Warhammer 40k because you will become a human shish kebab if they find you and that's probably the best case scenario. Of course, in response to this backlash, people within the game's workshop sphere like the community man- Hi. Meet Woodger. manager whose name is Andy Talbot has been going on mass blocking sprees essentially cleansing the very community he's been tasked with cultivating by silencing their very voices and I want to really drive the point home where in this case specifically who Andy is likely blocking from the conversation of the 40k community he's silencing the voices of people who've likely been collecting painting and consuming Warhammer content before Andy was even born I did a video about a week back concerning the Helldivers 2 community manager allegedly attempting to claim that Helldivers has always been woke, which didn't go over well at all. She was clearly told in private to shut up by the higher-ups because prior to her comments, she had <laughs> things like the Palestine flag in her username, which is to virtue signal, of course. And if you go look at her name now, it has a watermelon and emoji. Just to be clear which... on one last thing. The reason why this is important for you not to support this is because games like Helldivers exist now. If you if you have hell divers that exist, you will get a decent game that looks triple A worthy. Because this is how you get things back on the uh, on back to, on track. If you don't support this DI nonsense, Jeff Keighley and his cronies won't have no choice but put this stuff into his into their uh their uh game rewards. Because if there's no one buying the woke stuff and no one's caring for or voting on these woke things they have no choice but to put hell divers stellar blade hogwarts legacy into their into their uh roster for these games to get shine to for these games to get rewards that they deservingly need not this nonsense that they have done with alan wake and spider-man 2 it is what it is if you don't support these things they have no choice but to make these things by d default. That's why this person who was work, who was a, I think, a something manager, a, a digital manager. Bubbly Muhas. I messaged you. Okay. Uh, me has uh, this messenger slash manager person. Um, oh, um, in a bit. Um, I only got 20 minutes left. 20 minutes. Um, but yeah, uh, the point is, is that, uh, they have no choice. So if you make it your mission not to support none of this, they'll have a bunch of hell, we'll have more hell divers type games. When I say hell divers, not hell divers per se, but games that are like hell divers that don't push agendas, who is just a game for what it is. And that's it. I wouldn't say an hour. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say an hour. I wouldn't say an hour because like we just got... We gotta get this done, this done, and then this video, and that's it. Oh, and the video that, well, technically three more videos. One other video, but we'll see. 
But yeah, ultimately, that's what I'm saying. If you don't support it, they have no choice to make games like Helldivers because Helldivers is killing it. And you'll get games like Stellar Blade, Helldivers, the, um, all these different types of games that are worthy, that remember... The thing about Helldivers and Stellar Blade and all these other games, they bring back an era that was, was, that was used to be the norm 15 years ago. A game that was worthy of your salt, not making you spend a lot of fucking money and then getting subpar work, uh, subpar, uh, you know, content. It is what it is. Which confuses some people, but basically it's obvious the higher ups at Arrowhead told the community manager to shut up and stop virtue signaling because it could cost profits and likely told her to remove any political imagery from her account. So the watermelon is an emoji that has the same colors as the Palestine flag. So this is another way these people can virtue signal without actually having said political flags in their bio. So why am I talking about Helldivers in a Warhammer video, you're probably asking. The point here is that in that video, I explain how community managers have one of the most important jobs when it comes to any franchise. They are also the direct communication between the consumer and the developers. If the community manager tells the devs people like politics in the franchise, the devs are likely too busy to check if they're telling the truth or not, and they just implement it. Mm -hmm. So in Helldiver's case, their community manager attempted to virtue signal and the higher up Rai shut Ga down. Rai. Honestly, would every have been time I hear Arrowhead, I think of the water bottle. No damage is done in the future, but it's yeah, I kind of think that too. Better than nothing. In Warhammer's case, this Andy guy is the same thing. He is a direct connection between Games Workshop and the fans. And clearly, based on his block spree, he doesn't agree with the OG Warhammer fans when it comes to no female custodians. Which can only mean Andy Talbot is silencing hundreds, if not thousands, of voices within a community older than he is in order to quell the fires and ensure the dialogue surrounding this doesn't sour more. But of course, what he's done has made the opposite happen instead, as many users are now taking to social media to confirm that they are done with Warhammer. And they are cancelling their subscriptions. Some of them said things like, Kiss My Ass Games Workshop, not another penny. And here's other users also confirming that they are too cancelling their subscriptions to Game Workshop. One user even said, I was gonna get one of the Chaos Battle Forces due out this spring, but I'm gonna spend my money elsewhere, I think. At Warhammer, if you have this little respect for the lore, the intelligence of your customers, why bother? I'll stick with Old Hammer in the future. Another user echoed this, which got a big response where they said, I am a female player. I have Ultramarines, Orcs, Chaos Marines, and I collect various minis that I enjoy, like Grimaldus. From now on, I will be 3D printing. I will pirate your books and share them with all of my friends for oh, free. This pandering is insulting and I am a female player. I have Ultramarines, Orcs, Chaos, Marines, and I collect various minis that I enjoy, like... Grimadless? I think I'm saying that wrong. From now on, I will be 3D printing. I will pirate your books and share them with all my friends for free. This pandering is insulting and condescending. Based. That woman is a ba She's based. <laughs> Love it. That is a base response. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, people. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. She gets it. Once you don't let, if you don't let this thing infiltrate and you stop it where it begins, it won't fester into your shit. This, this woman is amazing. She is base as hell. If she is a woman, she's base as shit. I, she's amazing. That is an amazing Raya woman. Samurai. Yo ho ho. Yo ho ho. Yo bro, that is amazing. Condescending. And yeah, that one specifically is really concerning if your game's workshop, not because the customer is female, by the way, but the fact they said they will pirate and 3D print stuff instead. And that's the thing, really, the only reason people support game's workshop figurines and such is because they want to support the brand. But realistically, nothing is stopping any of these people from just 3D printing their own figurines and making their own armies to enjoy without giving a cent to game's workshop, and that's a really big deal. There could easily be Etsy accounts or other people who could supply users with old school Warhammer like figurines that adhere to the past. Which means in a way, Warhammer as a culture and hobby could theoretically still exist within the confines of what these users want. 
But of course, the money spent would not go towards Games Workshop, which is kind of insane, but it's a reality that can and will continue to expand if companies like Games Workshop continue down this path of heresy themselves. Then, of course, user... Do you know what's in your cheap protein powder? Well, here to... His voice sounds weird. Let's see what we've got. Users ...who are pro-changing the hobby and introducing woke elements to the franchise, which goes against everything Warhammer is about, by the way, kept pushing this image where Games Workshop said this in the past. Warhammer is for everyone. One of the great powers of our hobby is its ability to bring people together in common cause, to build bonds and friendships that cross divides. We believe in and support a community united by shared values of mutual kindness and respect. Our fantasy settings are grim and dark, but that is not a reflection of who we are or how we feel the real world should be. We will never accept nor condone any form of prejudice, hatred, or abuse in our Thank company you. or in the Warhammer hobby. We will continue to diversify the cast of characters we portray through miniatures, art, and storytelling so everyone can find representation in heroes oh, they can relate God. to. And if you feel the same way, wherever and whoever you are, we're glad you are part of the Warhammer community. If not, you will not be missed. And wow. there's so much to unpack there, fellows. Where do I even wow. begin with this one? Let's start with the fact that Games You're Workshop contradicts themselves with their beginning and end there. Warhammer is for everyone. But if you don't agree with us changing the hobby and lore to pander, you will not be missed. Yes, you so see that? That's... Warhammer is see how condescending that is? Dark Gore Gore. That is so the condescending. Touch the, the creek, I dare them. It will be a major reason they fail if they do. Raya Samurai. Bro! Oh, damn. You see how they talk to you? How they talk to you? If this is the same... Bro, this is the same condescending tone as that of the tw of the Twitch CEO. He, They do not respect their customers. They don't. Because this is that arrogance that comes from... This is when Darth made, Darth made that, that statement yesterday. He said, well, let them keep fucking up because people like me who will be making my own game will pander to... Well, not pander. Will, will, will serve the customer what they wanted if they keep fucking up. And that's where the alternative comes in. These people don't understand this. That arrogance is insane. That arrogance is insane. That's like saying to my my students, well, it, it is what it is. If if you don't like how I do things, you can always go you can just leave. You won't be missed. You do know there's Mark Bennett, there is there is uh Poco Pinko, there's um what's his name? Uh uh Ross Draws. There's the dead the Bob Ross. There's all these different people who can teach them how to draw just as fine and better than I can, but they chose me because Whatever their reason may be was a justifiable reason for their money. So I, the teacher, the artist, the person who's giving them the information they need, gets give them the respect that they deserve because they're giving me their money. They don't have to. You know what I'm saying? Ari doesn't have to give me money. Bean doesn't have to give me money. Whether, she, whether I know Bean personally or not, they do not have to give me their money every month. To support of me. They can just go to someone else. They can go to YouTube for free. It doesn't matter. Like it like bro, you have to put in consideration your audience is who makes you who makes who you are. Without your audience, you are nothing. So what you should do is be fair to yourself and be, be fair be fair to your audience and respect them as if they were someone who had you on life support, because technically they do. So at that point, be respectful to your customers they don't think this they have this arrogance about themselves thinking that you won't go nowhere else but this is exactly what um elon musk said to don lemon don lemon's like well don't you worry about people criticizing you he said it directly in his face he said don the only reason Andrew why robbins Teach, could you show where I need to make the corrections when you have a chance? Yes, I definitely will. Trust Thanks. Me. I will. We're never done. But this is the point of, um, this is when Don Lemon asked that question, and then Elon Musk saying, Don, 
The only reason I'm giving you this conversation is because you're Don Lemon. Plus, not only that, I get criticized on the platform every fucking day. You think I'm going to worry about some some form of uh, overly censorship? You'd be stupid. Like, are you stupid? Like, you, that's, that's how insane this is. Somehow now not real fans who likely have armies and figurines older than most of your so-called new fans who enjoy woke nonsense. This is insane to me, dude. How can you have this stance when it comes to this as a company? How dare you side with these supposed new players who want wokeness and Warhammer over the old? Surely you can't look at that and believe it to be a good financial decision. And the fact they confirm that they will go out of their way to diversify their characters and deliberately push for representation is all kinds of heresy in the eyes of 40k. This is peak financial self-deletion on Games Workshop part. How do they not see this? This is the same nonsensical approach that Marvel, DC, Star Wars, and more have taken for years now, and these properties have been beaten into the dirt when it comes to the financial ruin that's been left in its wake. Marvel's comics, for example, have been losing money for decades now due to this push for more inclusivity and representation. The movies, of course, for the first 10 years anyway, they felt genuine and great because they didn't adhere to what the ideology was behind the comics at the time. But once they did embrace the same ideology and push like the comics did, that's when Marvel's win streak ended and they've been drowning in the lake of mediocrity and diminishing returns since. So how can they not realize this? And now Warhammer is going down this path and it will just end up the same way. It will become weaker, smaller, and far less profitable, but this is what these companies want in the end anyway. It's the same mentality that is ravaging video games, and this actually reminds me exactly of what that one Bungie lawyer guy said back in March. From that park place, we had this article back in March titled, Former Bungie and the Pokemon Company lawyer defends Sweet Baby Inc. says his job was to get rid of anti-woke gamers. This guy's name is Don McGowan, and what he said back in March is literally word for word what is happening with Warhammer 40k. Like, dude, this is what he said about the whole Sweet Baby Inc. backlash in Gamergate 2, and I quote, 20 years in game, 17 in the C-suite, so I'm well situated to say these people blaming one consultancy for everything they don't like are again demonstrating they know nothing about the subject they purport to be discussing. They are sexist and racist. And it never occurs to them that the reason nobody made games for them was because nobody wanted to make those kinds of games. Nobody wants your money because no one wants you in their environment. Take it from someone most of whose job was figuring out ways to get rid of you. Trust and safety departments exist to get a-holes out of the gaming environment. You end up creating them to get rid of a-holes because adult humans don't want to spend their leisure time with a-holes. You're a gamer gator. F off, you goddamn child. Wow. Nobody wants your money. Go spend it on anime porn. What's the old rule about not showing tolerance to people who are themselves intolerant? That one. That's what you see in this thread and my response is, no, I'm not interested in debate. No, I don't care if you think I'm a bully. Get back in your effing lockers. He doesn't want to hear the truth. Sure, dork. Wow, you, you see that what he just did there? He doesn't want to, he doesn't want uh, opposition, but he'll tell you what to do. And then when you, it, he knows he's going to expect opposition. So he said he's not going to listen. So what's the point of you saying anything? That was condescending as hell. And you just assume that every person who is into anime uh, 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 corn? Like, what the hell? So you, so is there women just into that too? Are you talking to the women as well? It's like they think they're talking to one demographic and just one alone. There's just that demographic alone. There's a mix of people who are into Warhammer from orientation, from genders, Darth and Gory races. Corn. I don't... What, what the fuck? That's okay. People like myself will keep designing sexy women and men who make babies like them cry because they hate what they see in the yes, mirror. Yes, it's weird. That is so weird. You believe isn't true. What people aren't allowed to disagree, have at it, champ. I just don't care about your opinion. End quote. By the way, this Don McGowan guy has deleted everything he said about Sweet Baby Inc. and Gamergate 2. Because likely Bungie and Sony, who he works for, told him. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want. Up and keep his opinions to himself. But this is what I'm saying, fellas. What Don stated is what is now happening with Warhammer. These people hate you. They are confident that they can replace you and your wrong think with new customers who have been conditioned into right think. Think about it with how the school systems and colleges work to beat these ideologies into impressionable kids' heads. They are quite literally attempting to create a new status quo that adheres to their new age principles. They are indoctrinating people on a daily basis to believe and echo their opinions and they're confident through time they can and will replace you, me, and everyone else 
who's considered problematic with new waves of woke weirdos. So they genuinely believe that they will lose money now and for the foreseeable future. But eventually, through indoctrination tactics, they will regain those financial losses and cultivate communities rid of what made them popular to begin with. with. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing what I'm seeing, dear viewer? They genuinely believe that your way of thinking, your support, and money is obsolete. You are the old guard. You're withered and damaged. You're no longer fit for active duty. And it is time you lay down your hands and get on your knees and accept eternal oblivion for your crimes of being who you are. This is insane. They are attempting to crush your individuality until you are nothing but another NPC in the crowd that they can monetize and control to fit their twisted ideals. This didn't start with Warhammer, nor will it end with it either, but it is a concentrated effort of the many companies that control these IPs that are confident that they will silence you in due time, control you, or reject you completely if you do not abide to their rules. Thankfully, the damage is in full swing right now. If you go look at Games Workshop shares, they have been in free fall since this has all happened, with many users canceling subscriptions and investors likely pissing Arian. themselves because they don't want to lose money. I but widened her legs a little cause on the reference they looked a little more straight. If they do sell their shares in Games Workshop, that will be seen as a win in their eyes. Because I'm they essentially were something. successful in replacing even the investors who have wrong think with potential new investors who might have right think instead. But one user named Laz on Twitter pointed out something weird where they said, Games Workshop is literally hiding their current stock value. Was it such a gargantuan hit in the past 48 hours that you want to hide the truth rather than admit that you made a mistake? And yes, on certain stock sites, you can't see Games Workshop stock value in real time. Some might say it's a glitch, but isn't it suspicious that critical information is suddenly not available during a period of time where it is likely being sought after? That's incredibly weird if you ask me. Even Manga Lawyer pointed out how in Warhammer 40k Darktide, all the female models look like they got hit with the ugly stick. I mean, just oh my look at these faces. Every oh my female Jesus. face model is peak modern gaming. Apparently the devs said they made the females ugly on purpose because they're prisoners. And therefore everyone in that game is malnourished and desecrated. But they look more like the creatures in that one movie called The Time Machine than actual human females. And now we got people who've worked on 40k for years echoing the idea that Warhammer can and needs to be changed for modern audiences. This is what Nick Davis said, he's a former writer of the series and he said via Twitter and I quote, I worked for Games Workshop for a very specific part of its history, I started in the mail order trolls and worked my way up into the studio. Finishing out my career with Games Workshop, working on Wife Dwarf Magazine, UK and then the US edition. During my time at the company, especially during my White Dwarf years, I had one mission. I wanted to share the joy the Warhammer hobby gave me to lift up the mystic veil and show who you, the average gamer, like me, could participate no Darth matter your skill level. In short, take the some Oakley of the Forest is not even one. capable of making something that ugly after a game of baseball when that character was the ball. <laughs> is dry brushing. I like to think I mostly succeeded in this mission. And I am hardened when I hear from now vets in the hobby who cite me as a positive influence. The hobby, Night as bed. I like to call it, is supposed to be fun. Be a support hero today. To create By using commands like to be slash and donation share. and you never slash were cash to build app. Silos of lore because the very idea of the Warhammer and Warhammer 40,000 universe was the history was so convoluted and fragmented there was no such thing as fact. Everything was supposed to contradict, that was the purpose. That being said, I am overjoyed seeing the hobby that once gave me a means to live being so inclusive. Seeing female LGBTQ plus gamers and seeing them represented at the highest level of Games Workshop toy soldiers is pure joy. I love it, I wish I had what? seen more of it during my time at Games Workshop, but we are here now and you've made this old white dwarf very proud." End quote. Nick obviously is trying to take the high ground and score brownie points, but there is nothing that has been said here by either me or others that state that women or LGBTQ plus people can't be a part of the community. That's not the issue here. The issue is that the very people tasked with upholding this franchise's lore and integrity have no interest in doing so. Nick did say the lore of 40k was meant to contradict, but that doesn't make any sense. If the lore is meant to contradict and be fluid like he says, then why even bother with the lore to begin with? with. Thank you! Like you just you just destroyed your <laughs> argument! If the point of it is supposed to be convoluted, why touch it in the first place? If it's supposed to make no sense or be convoluted to the point that you can just keep warping stuff, why change it in the first place? Why change the past? Why not add stuff more to the future? Why 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 do that? 
Very odd, very strange. That's a strange tactic on that behalf. Cop out created out of the blue to explain why female custodians now suddenly exist when they never did. They're attempting to gaslight you into believing that these changes are not only welcomed, but were here all along suddenly, but that's not true. Nope. They're trying to manipulate you, dear viewer, into accepting these things, and it's up to you to realize that they are lying to you to mm -hmm. perpetuate a new agenda. Of course, you have users like this person who are totally okay with lore meaning absolutely nothing at all if it means virtue signaling is achieved where they said, I love this change. Once Darth they Goricorn. remove the genocidal and because that would take talent and as hiring removes nearly all talent lol. Correct. To which some it will only take talent to change to, to, to make that make sense. But because these people lack talent and imagination and they can only bring in real world tactics into this, they can't they can't they can't they can't build. They can only destroy and do the whole what was that thing from Black Ops? Uh two plus two two plus two is five. They're doing that to you right now. To anyone who's listening to this, they're doing that to you right now. They're telling you two plus two equals five. Because remember, they're saying that we're changing it for a modern audience, and this always been like this the entire time. When you know deep down that has never been like this at all. That's literally what that is. It's 2 plus 2 equals 5. If you keep bringing it up and keep telling you that it's 5, you will eventually either believe it's 5 or you will accept it for it being 5. I think it was a Russian tactic back then. It was how they brainwash you. As long as they keep constantly hammering it to you, whether it's true or not, as long as they keep hammering it to you, you will eventually accept it for what it is. Even if it's true or not. And that's what makes this scary. This is why um, game, game, game companies hire psychologists and all this stuff. And business um, hire psychologists to see what is the most effective way for you to keep your mind on the product that they're selling. So like a perfect example of this is like if you're watching like a Spider-Man movie. You know there's going to be a Sony gadget somewhere down the line in this movie. Because there's always... Because if you notice something from The Amazing Spider-Man and up... Angela Robbins. Sadly, some kids are already begging to believe 2 plus 2, two equals five. 5. Yeah, I know. Some of them are saying that. I saw that on the internet. It was it was wild. It, there, there's some people who are saying this. And it's scary. Because even if you say that's true, count up to 5. With your own fingers. You can't do it. You know what I'm saying? You can't do it. You literally have five fingers. <laughs> like, it's like, <laughs> where's that extra finger coming from? <sighs> or that lacking of a finger, better words to use. But, um, this is a, this is a uh, subconscious attack on the youth in itself. It's trying to get them to a, to accept Angela facts Robbins. that didn't exist. What's scarier is the fact they're getting brainwashed and they're believing it. Yes, that's that's scary. It's very scary. Someone said it this won't... is why most kids, I believe, lack the idea of critical thinking, because critical thinking is scary. Critical thinking is is dangerous. Critical thinking is is wrong thing. Critical thinking is being hateful critical thinking is just being normal and if you're being normal you're boring or if you're being normal being mean if you're being normal or expecting normal outcomes you you you're 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 you're, you're some form of heretic in some form in the world of the uh, of the society of today won't be warhammer anymore if they keep changing it it shows how creatively bereft libtards really are I think it would be a great tool for teaching my students about inclusion and the importance of uplifting oppressed voices if they just ironed out some of the more problematic aspects of the game. Play a different game then. The clue is in the game's Angela title itself, Robbins. Warhammer. In the grim oh, yeah. darkness of the future, there I was I struggled only drawing war. that left no. leg. Cause it looked like it overlapped based off the... Angela Robbins. Reference so I tried to copy it. See, the, the problem with the reference is that, like, the issue is that... What went wrong in your drawing here? I'm gonna say real quick. What 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 went wrong with your drawing here is that 
you made the legs too long and you didn't put a lot of perspective on this. Um, so you made the drawing flat. What's happening is that you didn't curve your character. You, you What you did is show more of here. We were supposed to see more of here. This is what we're supposed to see, not here. Because the body is turning away, and because the body's turning away, we're seeing more on this side. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I were to make this into like that, we're seeing less of this. This is receding backwards as this is coming out. And because this is receding, we can see the curve, the turn that's happening. And then we can work with the crotch here. That's how I was able to make sense out of it by doing this, by looking at your drawing. I see the, the inconsistencies based on the flatness. The, the, the issue is that you're, you're, you didn't recede any of your legs, or your, your, the side. Because this leg here, and I think what's causing this confusion is the legs itself, because you can see both legs, right? But you're seeing less of this. So what I would have done is made a little bit less of this leg, and may see more of this leg. That's the point. And then you saw this. That's why I drew it the way I did the first time. Angela Robbins. Eh, gotcha. The legs looked more straightened, so I assumed they were straight. Always remember the legs are never truly straight. They're just curved very conveniently. So they're always curved like this, kind of. It's like my legs here. They're kind of curved this way. So when I made the drawing... Yes, they look straight, but really, I would have made them more curved like this. Because remember, the butt is still poking out to hold up the person in the back. So that's what makes this a bit tricky. This is pretty advanced for someone who's beginning. So this is why you will run into this problem almost frequently and a lot and don't know how to figure it out. And this leg here, I would recede this because we're seeing, we shouldn't see all this leg. We should recede about here. Here. Oh, actually, we'll see here. We'll put it back and we'll see more of this leg here. Overlapping that leg. As shown in your reference. I think it would be a great tool for teaching my students about inclusion and the importance of uplifting oppressed voices if they just ironed out some of the more problematic aspects of the game. Play a different game then. The clue is in the game's title itself, Warhammer. In the grim darkness of the future, there is only war. No, I want to play this game and I don't want it to and be that's about And that's their response. They'll tell you, if you don't like the game, go play something else. And this is how, Angela Robbins. And this is how they infiltrate gotcha. you. Gotcha. I think I see where I need to correct, correct it. it. Yeah. Thanks. No problem. And uh, I know the leg is a little out more. I would actually have this out a little bit more because she is putting more emphasis on the leg here. Like about here. Just enough. This is why the negative space, look closely at the negative space between the leg. It's pretty wide, but it stops about here. I think about here. I mean, just just a little before the crotch right here or so just keep working at it you'll get it um and this is how they get you so they'll they'll this is how they get it. this is the perfect example you make a hobby or you're into a hobby people who don't deserve to be in the hobby gets into the hobby once again the hobby they change the hobby you you tell them that's not how the hobby is they say you're being not inclusive you so what they'll tell you is either leave or accept it for what it is. So let's just say you choose to leave. You leave hobby to go to a new hobby. Guess what they'll start doing? Looking at where you left to go see what you're doing to go into your hobby to change it. That's how it works. That's how it works. When they start realizing that the thing that they made is not as cool as it used to because that what got them in the first place was the thing that it originally was and they change everything, they go and look at what you're doing and follow you where you went to go change what you're doing and saying you're not being inclusive. That's how they work. About boring war and death stuff. What the... These people exist, man. This is a real person whose voting rights are equal to yours, by the way. 
They don't even play Warhammer to begin with, but they would be interested in it if they removed all the problematic aspects like boring war and death concepts from the franchise. What are we even doing here anymore? That's not even Warhammer then. Oh boy, I can't wait to enjoy Star Wars, but only if they get rid of the Rebels and Imperials. And remove the lightsabers, maybe then I'll enjoy it. That's what this sounds like. You like D&D? Well, I'll only play it if you remove the Dungeons and Dragons from it. These people are real, man. They aren't fake. I can't believe they have takes like this, but this kind of person is who Games Workshop wants to pander to. Someone who doesn't even buy their products to begin with. The consumer who wants no war nor hammer in a franchise called Warhammer for the love of God. It's so stupid. And of course, the only reason they are interested at all is so that they can use it as an example to push virtue signaling. I feel like I'm becoming the Joker at this point. It's as Grum said, the issue with Warhammer and Custodes is the lie. They could have changed it all they wanted, but they decided to lie and pretend it was that way all along. That lie is part of an insidious, malignant ideology that throws away all reason and fact. That yep. is the part that is dangerous. And he's right. What the hell are we even doing here then? You want a Warhammer audience that doesn't want war, dark brooding themes, or gore to be involved with the franchise whatsoever. Then why even call it Warhammer then? This is like someone watching Lord of the Rings and constantly saying, why aren't they using guns because they're more effective than swords? Because it's Lord <laughs> of the Rings. It's medieval fantasy. How are these people real? This is peak NPC behavior. I can feel it, guys. I can feel myself becoming the Joker. This is so stupid. But everything is fine, and engagement is totally going well for Warhammer, except not really at all. The master of the TDS has yet again unearthed that another company is using botting to boost their products, and yes, it's Warhammer. As he shows, Warhammer, Vermintide, and Darktide are both having bots be used to artificially boost engagement. Just look at these threads, man. Like, come on. They say things like, Join the fight against the Skaven and Chaos. Epic battles await. Who is this Saudi Arabian oil baron prince user <laughs> profile that's... <laughs> this Saudi guy is in here saying, Join the fight against the Skaven, Chaos, and Epic battles. Really? That even looks fake. Look at his... Come on, man. About Warhammer. These bots aren't even trying anymore. So much chaos in action. Love the intense combat in Vermintide 2. I love the intense melee combat and cooperative gameplay in Vermintide 2. Thrilling what? battles await as you fight against the Skaven Horde. Nobody talks like this in real life. Literally nobody. These bots sound like they're promoting the game more than the actual post about the damn product in the first place. I can't, man. I'm becoming the Joker with every line I'm reading. This is insane. They would rather you leave and they replace your engagement with literal bots instead in order to promote right thing. This is wild. They're even getting community noted and to be even more based, users are citing illegally obtained PDFs of old Warhammer books as sources, which is so based, and they said. The Adeptus Custodes have been explicitly stated to be entirely male since the first edition Rogue Trader rulebook published in 1987 to the 8th edition Codex Adeptus Custodes published in 2018. This user is harnessing Game Workshop's own text against their word as proof that they're lying. What you're seeing is advanced warfare. This is some wild next level shit dude. As one user said, gotta respect the absolute disrespect, but bloody hell is that glorious to see. I guess that's what needs to happen. Actual Warhammer fans are going to have to hoard all the real information in text, even if it means stealing it and keeping it untouched. Because we all know Games Workshop will get their people to go back and retroactively update and change previous texts in order to rewrite history to fit their new age agenda. And by the way, when we look at who's some of the shareholders in 40k, it all starts to make more sense. Because right there, you can see Blackrock and Vanguard as always. That, that, what did I just say? Oh my god! They're part of it! I told you! <laughs> I said it. Larry Fig, Blackrock, and, 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 and Vanguard. I said those three. Guess who pops up in the video? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's, oh, my God. <laughs> to fit their new age agenda. And Jesus way, Christ. Who some of the shareholders in 40K, it all starts to make more sense. Bro. Because right there, you can see Blackrock and Vanguard as always. Good Lord, man. It never ends. They're the shareholders. As That's why this is happening. That's why this is happening, because they're shareholders, they have the high, a high stock of it so they can make all the decisions. That's fucking crazy! As of now, it seems that Warhammer has been infiltrated on all levels. This also makes me worried that Henry Cavill's led Amazon live-action series will also get overrun as well. If so, that's three times now that Henry Cavill has been involved with a franchise that got ruined by weirdo producers. 
And again, may I reiterate, the problem here is not that Warhammer cannot allow gay players or women. This is not the issue. Everyone should be welcomed into the hobby, but I think what needs to be stated is that the hobby's rules and tenets should also be respected. So if some journalist or whatever attempts to paint this as some anti-LGBTQ plus narrative, it's not that at all. Women do exist in Warhammer. We have the Sisters of Silence, which their Wikipedia entry states they obviously exist, which says, The Sisters of Silence are an all-female order of Imperial witch hunters tasked with hunting down rogue psychers and other psychic threats across the galaxy. So women do exist in Warhammer, and you don't see Games Workshop making a Sister of Silence a man, although I'm sure they'll virtue signal somehow a certain way eventually. But fans just want the lore to be respected, and it clearly isn't. And that's the main issue here, so remember, if anyone attempts to sully or twist the words of what the actual fans are saying, it is not for bigoted or racist reasons. It is strictly lore, and that must be upheld no matter what. Otherwise, nothing matters and the entire franchise will fall into oblivion, but what do you think about all of this? Are you done with Warhammer or not? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. Bro, this is wild, man. That's crazy. That's crazy as hell. That's crazy. I can't. That's crazy. Oh. All right, let me see what uh, Darth sent me. So he sent me this video. I think it's something with Mermaid Man and Baracle Boy. Send me something. Yeah, I think it was this. I think how it don't look long. It looked like it's just a trailer. It looks funny. But that was a DB on like, subscribe, share, follow, and comment. If you guys enjoy this and like great stuff, I'll see you guys in the next one. Okay, so this is the video. The it's brand. a trailer. I did, it's one of those spoof crit trailers. It's just for a laugh. So let's see what it's about. It'll be fun. Perfect. So this is basically Mermaid Man and Barco Boy, the uh, the movie trailer. For those who don't know who Mermaid Man and Bar Barco Boy is... I don't know how you can't know what that is if you live in the West. Uh, they are spoof parodies of both Aquaman and Aqu uh, Aqualad uh, from the TV series um, SpongeBob SquarePants. They're supposed to be the superheroes in there in that universe. Uh, Raya Goth Samurai from SpongeBob. LOL. They're they're literally like the Ultra Lord from like Jimmy Neutron. The Crimson Chin from, you know, from Fairy Odd Parents. So like SpongeBob has um, uh, Barnacle Boy and Mermaid Man, obviously from like Aquaman and you know Aqualad. So it is what it is. So let's see what this is about. And I will be really surprised if any of you didn't know what those names were. That would be very sad. For forty years, we've been protecting Bikini Bottom. And we won't stop until there's no evil left to defeat. We're getting old, Mermaid Man. The ocean wants us to retire. Retire? But I've never felt better! Mermaid Man. Maybe this is a sign we should just give up. No! We have to show them the heroes we still are. There's a lot of evil left in the old coop. And a rage isn't gonna make this any easier. Right, hey, things possible. Apple. As long as we believe. It's not my fault you crashed a boat mobile. Well, it's not my fault you have dementia. It's not my fault you crashed a boat mobile. With your <laughs> Alzheimer's and my arthritis, we can't keep doing this. Huh? You guys can't even wipe your own butts. What makes you think you can save someone else's? All this pain and all this medication, it won't bring back the old days. Uh, I've fallen and I can't get up, but at least we'll still have each other. <laughs> no matter how hard you fight, there will be always one evil left to defeat. Time. Oh no! Mermaid Man's dying! That's why you need to buy gamer substitution code LOL so we can make more videos like this. 
I'm not gonna lie, bro died because he was at the Golden Corral. Bro died because he was at the Golden Corral. That was ultimately what happened. That's funny as hell. Golden Corral's food is ass. All right, so with that said, like, subscribe, share, follow, comment. I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was amazing with the Mermaid Mad and Baraka Boy. Thank you, Darth, for saying that to me. I'll put this as a video. I was like, so with that said, I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs> oh, man. Darth Goricorn. With all the crazy in the world, sometimes something funny is needed. Yeah, I know. All right, so let's... Uh, Bean, are you still here, Kitty? Are you still here? I don't know if you're still here. I'm not sure. Uh, but, uh, you know what, before... I'll wait till she answers. Before she answers. Damn not the Golden Corral. I hate Golden Corral. I remember when I went to Golden Corral for the first time. I was so angry. Anyway, so, with that said, we're gonna go to the next one. This is from, uh, Trenton Art. Uh, if I'm saying Tr Trenton Art, I think I'm saying it wrong. Now, I know I always I always try to give, like, I try to so showcase as many anime, uh, manga, and anime, um, no, anime, manga, anime, and manga recommendation type uh, channels, but I want to do something a little different from this. Um, we're going to pick the most worst, worst manga that's ever been recommended. A little bit of a different twist, a little bit of fun. Um... I know that Bri might enjoy this still. I I'm, I think I'm going to enjoy this. Hopefully this won't be a total train wreck, but this will be fun to watch and give my opinion on it if there's any opinions needed because it is already saying the worst manga. What worse can I say, right? But it also gives um, shine or spotlight to other creators who are either just as high or low as I am. Um, I'm nowhere close to high, but close enough. Right, um, Samurai. Now it's no, cool. cool. Okay, cool. So this is from Trident Art. I'm thinking I'm saying that right. I could be saying it wrong. This was, came out four days ago. So they had this uh, video called Shonen Jumps Worse Manga. And he has 2.35 thousand followers or uh, subscribers. So give him a follow if you can. And also give a like to the video if you like it or whatever the case may be. So let's see in the next one. And let's go. Is one years old, I yes. thought about making a video that differs from my usual stuff, which is mostly me praising or exploring weekly Shonen Jump manga. So let's talk about bad Shonen Jump manga, or ones that I don't like very much, alongside exploring the idea of what a worst manga is. Originally, I wanted to make a top 10 worst Shonen Jump manga, but I found this idea too restrictive and kind of boring, because my honest answer would have been to list some pretty miserable, boring, and unfinished works as my top 10 worst manga. While I still want to mention the majority of what would be in my top 10, I also want to touch on different kinds of worst manga because it's very easy for anyone to point to a manga they dislike from Jump and say it's the worst. It happens all the time with a lot of big series which are pretty competent as well as recent axes, which aren't great but I usually wouldn't ever call them the worst. It makes me laugh a bit since I guess having read so many Jump manga, when someone says something like Duran Duran or Ice Head Gil is the worst jump manga. To me, those are perfectly fine and kind of enjoyable compared to what's actually at the bottom of the barrel. And that's another point, this is mostly subjective and my opinion, but still, I want this to be an exercise in thinking a bit more about why we consider a manga to be the worst. With that out of the way, okay. let's address Hitman Reborn, since it's by far the most controversial take I'm going to have here, and probably the reason at least a few people clicked on this video, and maybe even commented about it without even watching. While not as well known as other big shonen contemporaries, Reborn ran for over 400 chapters, which is staggeringly long compared to the vast majority of other titles that have run in the magazine, and it's this metric, it's a length, this is why it's one of my worst jump I manga. said that before. Unlike the other series on this list, I said this thousands of times to y'all. Y'all do everything but what I tell you. I say, don't do any complicated, don't make it complicated, then you have to. But you guys ignore that all the time. And I keep constantly saying, stop doing more than you have to. You're making the process longer. You can actually get this done within less than a year and get, like, get good at doing this. 
But y'all just ignore what I say and do what you please so I don't even argue with y'all anymore. I just let you be. I keep saying it. I have the expertise on why I'm explaining this the way I do. No one ignore it. No one listens to me. I keep saying it. Don't do any... When you're doing when you're doing down this process, don't be doing no extra coloring. Don't do no values. I said just do shapes, um, shapes, uh, gesture, and what's the other one? Form. Those are only three, but you guys will like to add an extra layer of difficulty for like no reason, and then you guys will ask me how to draw this, and I'll explain how, and then you guys be confused, and then just either abandon the lesson or just uh, what you was originally doing, or you try to make it look pretty by doing something that you should have done. So what I will always say to everyone, if you're learning, I don't mean to cut off the video. This is just to any student that's listening to this. Um, if you're learning how to draw, just do those three things, gesture, form, and shape. That's it. Don't add 10 different characters in one thing. Don't do no coloring. Don't do no clothing. Do a naked mannequin. Because it's not hard not to see anything. There's no no clothes obscuring your visualization. None of that. But nope. You guys do not listen to your teacher. And then you guys look at me like I don't know why I'm not improving. Or if you are improving, you're not improving as fast as you want to. I told you exactly what the key is. But most people don't want to listen. Because they want to do their own damn thing. So I leave them be. It's your money. I keep telling y'all. I'm telling you. I'm but my goal is to get you off the subscription, not stay on it. So, you know. Much longer and has some pedigree to it, but I don't think it comes close to matching up with most of the other long manga in the magazine. Reading it was quite frankly a chore most of the time for a few reasons. Some are out of its control, like the scan and translation quality, since it was never fully completed officially in English. But other negative Darth like Oricorn. Are from from my experience it can be hard to not overlap Surprise. personal lore and story lore too much by accident without realizing it in storyboarding. I guess you're right in that sense. It, it can, it'll be kind of hard not to. Like, um... Let's go down again. Like a crazy wall. Okay. Uh, from my experience, it can be hard not to overlap personal lore and story lore too much. By yeah, it's kind of hard because remember, most stories come from your experience, right? Or uh, a warped sense of your experience of how life goes, and that that's what the old heads do. The pro back in the day that made movies work, um, or cartoons or whatever anime. Darth Boricorn. The balance is a delicate dance on a fine line. Yeah, and that's what this is why most of these new writers and uh, act all these people who are using these new these old IPs as a vehicle because they can't think for themselves, right? So that's why that's why people who are not truly creatives will like to jump on an IP and just because the lore is already there, right? The lore is already there. Whether it be for uh, 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 Warhammer or Spider Man or uh, Dragon Ball, you know what I'm saying? It could be anything, right? The, the, the lore has already been established by someone who was already smart enough, creative enough, talented enough to construct something for everyone to love. Now it's just for the activist or the progressive or the insane person to get their hands on it when the Arthur is dead or already sold off their property. Um, to make the characters say things because remember these are characters that you already like right it's easy to infiltrate a place when people already th know who you are right so like if i can dress up like like okay it's like if i i can infiltrate disney world right now if i if i can take out the the dude who's wearing the mascot right if i take out the mascot and put on his skin suit put on the suit itself and walk in disney world no one's going to suspect me of anything do i do something Right, that's how it works. the The IP is there. the 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 mascot is there. The story behind that mascot is there. It's just now who's under the mask that makes all the difference. Makes it still consistent, right? So, this is why uh, people in the in, in the old times or in the old days, like the X Men, the old nine the the nineties X Men, the the nineties. He Man, the Transformers, the 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 GI Joes, all these other IPs or Ninja Turtles or whatever, were talented because they had to build off the experiences they had. Or Legend of Zelda, 
like the dude who made Legend of Zelda said the reason why he made Legend of Zelda because when as he was a kid, he used to explore and go in caves and stuff like that. Well, I'm nothing elaborate like in Legend of Zelda, but like you know, he was a kid and they would explore, and that's what's the that was the fun of like Legend of Zelda to be curious to explore to get an outcome of something that you're not too sure of, but you will get an outcome nonetheless. That that was the major point of his experience. So yeah, it's hard to not write something about your personal experience. You can do that, but the problem is when you make too much of the personal experience the forefront and not the story itself, you're going to have a problem. Stan Lee said it. The only reason why he made uh, the X-Men is because it will be too much of a headache to write everyone having a backstory to get superpowers so it's much easier just to write something that was easy to create for anyone to relate to right the the relatability wasn't the superpowers anymore the 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 relatability was each character as a human from that point but write them in such a way that they don't they 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 don't feel like they're pandering they don't feel like they're just constructed because it's a superhero movie uh, uh you know franchise it's it's that kind type of thing that I think is now forgotten nowadays. It's the the idea of being truthful in your writing and not trying to pander in your writing or try to be relevant in your writing. I think that's stupid. I think you should write something that genuinely gets you up in arms. You know what I'm saying? That genuinely gets you want to get up out of the bed. If you write things like that, I rather I rather the activist write about or the progressive activist writes about their activism in a way that is original to them than taking an IP that exists and just using it as a vehicle to wag their finger at people. I'd rather you wag your finger with your original character, at least I know what to avoid, or at least I know what that's about, than you taking my my beloved character like Goku or the Gojo or the 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 the, the Shinras of of uh, Fire Force and be wagging their finger at me because I don't believe in what they want me to believe. You know what I'm saying? That, that that's just Korn. stupid. What I've done to fix the problem for me is that the stories are connected to their friends' history and not main factions, keeping the main story plot clear of confusion. Good. That's what you want to do. Always have a separation between... You always have to have motivation. You have to have separation between motivation and... Um... Was it motivation and something else I'm thinking of? It was motivational uh, goals. But don't let distractions be the main focus. Make the goals be the main focus. Make the distractions a distraction, not the main thing. That's what a lot of people do. Now, if the story, if the backstories are relevant to the story, yeah. But if it's not to that extent, like if it's just like a basic backstory to get the point A, point B, fine. But don't make it the main source. Don't be like the Lily Sings of YouTube and being telling everyone who orientation she is. She's a woman of color. And because she got here is because she's a woman of color. And there's nothing more to that. Like you, know, if you know who Lily Singh is, you know who is. she's a she's an annoying person as well. She likes to mention how funny she is. She likes to mention how of a person of color she is. She likes to mention her orientation. Angela Robbins. It's so annoying. His laugh is seriously contagious. LOL. Hmm. <laughs> Amazingly, I'm fine with this initial comedy arc. It's when the battle elements get introduced, it begins to struggle. A lot of the fights just lacked impact for me, feeling very cookie cutter. Like they had to make a bunch of fights for each character, leading to the side cards feeling a bit weak and all of the arcs bloated. The heroes do get better over time and I did come to like most of them, but I very rarely cared about its villains. Raya Samurai. One of the lowest we know we know brown woman and bi. And bi, yeah. Cool, only for it to fumble a lot. New characters are introduced feeling very one note, and I don't think it really took advantage of its unique setting enough. Another big issue I have is the general sexism Reborn has. The main female cast are pitifully underutilized and are often put into babysitting or cooking roles. It left a bad taste in my mouth, and I don't really even want to touch on Chrome, but her character is all types of icky with her relationship, with one of the main antagonists being a prime source of just horrible cringe for me. 
She's also constantly objectified and it's not fun. Out of the big shonen manga from Jump, so far Reborn is probably my most disliked and I generally try to lower people's expectations of it going in. As for me, I was super excited to begin it and it seemed like it had everything going for it. A strong fan base who love it, really cool artwork, and this idea of it being a pillar of 2000s and 2010s jump. Um, it just ended up falling uh, short. Of yes, I believe so. Well, I know that. Um, I want. Mm, I think yes, because uh, the creator said he's finishing up. I think the Dark Continent arc, I believe. So nine times out of ten, if he gets it done, I think he'll they'll make an anime out of it that for me so I and so, is yes. the worst in these regards for being disappointing and for having such a big time commitment i had to do to read it all which in the end wasn't really worth it my disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined now onto a manga i can confidently say is actually really bad and it's yeah. also one of the newer ones i agree with when people bring it up as one of the worst our blood oath as a big fan of vampires and vampire media in general, I think you usually get two kinds of vampire stories. Very good ones full of thematic depth and emotion, or absolute piles of shit like Vampire Knight. But at least Vampire Knight is oddly funny and charming. Our Blood Oath, on the other hand, is just kind of pathetic. Have you woken, Yuki? Do you remember who I am? This man, he's... He's my... Uh, what? What? Whoa! Holy hell, what the hell? <laughs> I've never really watched Vampire... What the hell? <laughs> you can't- you can't do this! <laughs> oh my god. by brothers who go around in a Monster of the Week style format. It attempts to try to interweave a narrative about family, from what I remember, but lacks coherence and is totally Darth all over the place with its I've watched enough vampire and movies and anime to not even be surprised, I'm lol. Saying you can't have that is wild. Nice Whoa, that's aspects. my mind. Blood Oath just doesn't handle them very well. I remember its later character introductions coming out of left field and it being incomprehensible at times. And for an axe manga, it started to introduce a lot near its end, making it even messier than it already was. Pair this with some mostly mediocre art and character Arian. design, as well as it taking zero. Oh, that's Vampire Knight. Concepts or themes, also, did you get the really reference I sent mess. you on Discord? Our Blood Oath see. is definitely one of the worst jump manga I've read and the worst recent example. It's also sold very poorly, but that's to be expected with a lot of manga I'll be mentioning, with worst selling definitely being a strong reason to consider a manga to be one of the worst in Jump. Next up, we have a bit of a speed round. During the late 2000s and early 2010s, Jump serialized a lot of football manga. Sports duds littered the 2000s, but in particular this period of time had a concentrated number of football flops, which include Meister at 10 chapters, Shonen Shiku at 15, Lightwing at 22, Doi Sol at 17, and if we push our time frame later into the 2010s, we also have Tokyo Wonder Boys with 10 chapters, and Ole Golazo at 12. These are all football manga that I honestly struggled in hindsight to differentiate from each other. It doesn't help that the majority aren't fully translated or even have more than one chapter available in English, but none of them captured my attention or laid the groundwork for a fun sports series in my opinion. And it's not that I don't like sports series, since I think some of the more recent ones Jump has had are very good. And the last football manga, Shudan, was really enjoyable for me too. The truth is, if I made a top 10 worst shonen jump manga list, a substantial portion of it would probably be made up out of these football series, since they're lacking in anything for me. They also showcase how little time Jump will wait for sports series to blossom, and perhaps why, before 2023, we were in a bit of a drought for sports series in the magazine because a lot of what came before it wasn't great aside from the occasional big hits like IQ. There's definitely a case to be made that worst can also equate to something being boring or unoriginal especially when we're talking about media because what's the point of experiencing something you've already seen before over and over again that's also not done well.
Samurai 8 is the other big name of this list that's a pretty well disliked manga, although some Kishimoto diehards can be found defending it now and again. Samurai 8 has some serious problems with info dumping and exposition. It's constantly trying to build out its world almost entirely through telling and not showing. The artwork is another thing I don't like. It's not bad in a traditional sense, but it's way too white. What? There's no balance of light and darks, and all the thin lines which are meant to add detail everywhere just make it look messy. Everything blurs together and nothing is really given space to breathe on a page. Another major gripe I have is with Hyakimaru, or more so how he's handled. A disabled character as the protagonist is a really interesting choice, and if done well it could have led to all sorts of cool narrative and emotional beats. Sadly, the manga fixes Hyakimaru at the very beginning, meaning he's no longer disabled, which is not only boring, but super icky. I feel like there should have been some commitment to the idea of him being disabled, or they should have avoided the idea entirely. This is one I actually dropped way back when it came out, because I just could not stomach it in every aspect, and is one I dread having to come back to, because I know one day people will want to see an Axe Files on it. Samurai 8 might be considered the worst for poor narrative and art choices, as well as being kind of offensive with its handling of a disabled character, or at the very least, very boring in its execution. If you're familiar with the channel, you might have noticed the Axe File video on SWAT, where I go way more in depth than I will here, but to put it bluntly, SWAT has one of the most dislikable protagonists ever. It doesn't know what it wants to do with its story, while simultaneously having a boring school setting, a boring side cast, and a boring power system. It's also what an edgy 13 year old would write if they got the chance to be in Jump. It's an all around bottom tier jump manga, and go check out my video on it if you'd like to hear me bash on it more. Musashi is a manga that's much older than the rest of this list, coming out in 1972 and written by jump legend Hiroshi Motomiya. I touched on this one in one of my earlier history videos, but reading Musashi made me miserable. It's such a departure from Motomiya's first work in Otoko Ipikikaki Daisho, going from the charismatic main character of that work, Mankichi, to the titular Musashi. It's jarring. I honestly can't believe he wrote a character with so much riz for his worst work to one I just hate with all my being for his second. The manga also jumps from place to place, attempting to be semi-biographical as it references the real historical figure, Musashi, but it's just messy in its execution and barely legible at times. The manga was also promptly axed during its initial run, and Motomiya continued working on Otoko Ipiki afterwards. This is the worst from a historical perspective, and an example of what I'd consider a good mangaka following up a great work with a really bad one that lacks all the charm from their initial success. If you've been in the wider jump community for any amount of time, chances are you might have heard the name Chagecha pop up. It's from my knowledge the quickest manga to have ever been axed in the modern history of the magazine, Damn. lasting a pitiful 8 chapters. It's created by the author of Bobo 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 Bobo, Yoshi Osawai, and uses the same humour and crude drawings, but this time mixes in gang and Yankee elements. For whatever reason, it must have been pretty hated to be called this quickly, and from reading it myself, it's just a mess both visually and in its narrative, and overall I'd say it's a very repulsive manga. Nevertheless, it will be remembered in Jump history as being one of the worst and shortest manga to ever be serialised within the magazine. Another personal stinker of mine is Sporting Salt, a manga about a boy who wants to be a doctor for athletes specifically, the premise sounding kind of original. I remember the majority of what is translated focusing on what wacky gadgets the main character could make to help out other athletes. It just doesn't seem like a good concept for a long running series though, its characters are also one note, and it has some of the blandest art I've seen in Shonen Jump. Art's quite hard to dissect and critique overall, but I can quite confidently point to its constant bland pure white backgrounds, blank faced characters, and general poor quality drawings as an example of a badly made manga. And generally, even if a manga is bad, the art is still nice and unique, but with Sporting Salt and a lot of manga on this list, the art is more of a detractor than anything. This is an example of a manga so bland in every aspect, in its characters, story and art, and concept even, that it can't be anything but one of the worst.
And finally, we reach the boy taking front and center in the thumbnail, Inumaru from Inumaru Dashi. This is a gag manga from 2008, focusing on a nursery school age boy called Inumaru and his caretaker Tamako. The first thing you'll notice is that this has one of the most ugly and poorly drawn art styles you've ever probably Bro, seen from Jump, and that Inumaru's junk is constantly hanging out, which Bro. is meant to be funny I guess, and is one of his central gags, so I hope you get used to it if you plan to read this manga. No. If that's not enough to deter you, Inumaru is maybe the most annoying little shit to ever exist. I'm not sure if he's purposely meant to make you angry, but the poor adults who have to take care of him are terrorized by him and his stupid penis jokes and asinine references the whole manga. I remember not really getting any references, maybe because of regional differences or a poor translation, oh but it's God, not Jesus funny Christ. in the slightest. From every single thing I've read in Jump, this little fuck is my most hated manga character and belongs in the worst manga in Jump. It also somehow lasted four years. I cannot imagine reading this for four years. I get that gag manga are subjective and comedy is subjective, but Roboko, Chojo, Kochikame, heck, I even like Ichigoki, they're all way better than this, and I'd even gladly read the gag manga I dislike over this. Things like Shigumaru or Mori King, they're still way better than what Inumaru Dashi is. So if you take something out of this video, I think it should be that before you complain or call something the worst manga in Jump, know there is a Lovecraftian depth to the bad manga within the magazine. There's manga I wouldn't even wish my worst enemy read. So hey, you might not like Jujutsu Kaisen or Kagurabachi or some other axe manga, but at least it isn't fucking Inumaru Dashi. If I ever find one of these lying around again, I swear to fucking God, I will stop being so polite. Get the fuck out of my sight before I demolish you. And those are what I think are some of the worst manga Shonen Jump has to offer. Of course, there's a lot more duds out there and there's tons of manga I've still yet to read or flat out can't because they lack translations, but from the 200 plus manga from Jump I've read, these definitely stand out in one way or another as one of the worst. If you disagree and do like any of these series, please feel free to tell me what you like about them in the comments, or tell me what your least like jump manga is. Hopefully no wars start down there. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to hear me talk more positively about manga, I have a whole host of videos on Weekly Shonen Jump on my channel, ranging from my history series where I go over old manga from Jump's history to the Axe Files series where I cover some of the less fortunate cancelled manga from Shonen Jump. Okay, okay, that's the end of that. So with that said, like, subscribe, share, follow, and comment. This was Trenton Art. Um, I don't know, man. That one, those last other ones, the Vampire Knight and the other one threw me off completely. I that, that threw me off. Oh, God, the kid, that one, if that was supposed to be a kid, I don't know. Like, that was just uncalled for, to be honest. It is what it is. So we're done here, pretty much. Let me answer Ari's question before I go. Um... So I'm serious, could you show how to draw this in Arena. what areas? Uh... I feel like the worst anime to read thin down what anime I want to read now, lol. Oh. Wait, what areas I need to focus on this pose? Raiga Samurai. Art, I can't NGL, I never heard of these, like... thank God. Let me see, he said, uh, what? He said, he said... I, I heard of these things. Yeah, not gonna lie, I never heard of these. Thank God. Thank God. You're lucky. I heard of Vampire Knight, but all the rest I don't remember or don't remember being recommended to at all. So, all right. So let me get straight to this question. She says, "How do you draw this?" Um, I can draw it, but all right, but I can't quite see her leg that's hidden in the grass. Oh. Um. If you can't see her, if you can't see her leg. Oh my leg. Okay, first thing we'll make the head. That's where it's gonna start out. We make this fast head. Head's on a tilt, so. Okay, that's like that. All right, 
and then you make the shoulders like this, like that, because we're seeing more of this shoulder and more of this chest. I'm gonna put so we're looking down upon her. I'm gonna put the body about here. Like so. The butt is about here, I'm going to just assume. Okay. Love handle is about here, so we, we got to make sure that love handle is there. Arms like this. I'll be, I think I'll be more like this, more like down like this. Shoulders here. And then I'll put the arms out here. I'm just guessing this one through so we can get this right. Okay, um, do the leg about here, because this leg is actually sticking out, so I will put this leg more here, make it a 3D form, and because the leg is curved, uh, not curved, but like it's bracing against something, I'll just put it like about here, I'll just assume that's where the leg will be. Now the leg that's upwards will go up like this. Because the leg is here, I'm going to assume that that's somewhere across. Now, I'm going to say across, I'm going to say like here, like that. Like this, if the leg goes like this, I'll assume it's somewhere in this particular area. I want to say it's that high. I would say it's probably lower than that, just a little bit lower. So I'll erase this part. Okay. All right, and then the leg will come across like this. Now I make sure that it's connecting here back to the crotch area. The leg went down. Go up the back of the leg here. Okay, now I think I okay, I'll foreshorten this leg actually. So I would make this leg foreshorten like this. Oops, is that weird? Because we can see the foot is about here. Is the lab marking is the foot is about here? Well, I see the boot that is. So the boot's here, so I'll put the foot about here. I will say the foot's about here. Now I think this looks a little too like strange, so what I'm going to do is bring this down a little bit more. It feels a little more natural if I bring it down, not so high up. And actually I'll bring up this leg a little bit more. Uh, now I'll make this part a little bit more smaller because I did make it a bit too big. There we go. Push this leg a little bit more in. As such. And now put the leg, I mean the arm is leaning off this leg so I will have to put a bit of a so for here, with the bucket about here. Like this. Like so. that I'll probably bring on the leg a little bit more just a little bit about 
there because the foot seems to be at the almost at the knee. So I'll erase this part as a landmark. So the foot seems to be just at the knee. And I'll foreshorten that part. Um, now let me get Y in the leg a little bit more. Clean it up. Dominic. Hello again. Hello, Dominic. What brings you to the stream? And then like this. Going to erase a little bit more. Show some. Okay, there we go. Breasts are right here. Arms about here. Messed up a little bit here, so I have to move this. Right up there. So we can see the elbow. that. There we go. Okay, now the foot, you don't really need to draw this, but for whatever reason you want to draw this foot, you have to think, I, I always try to find it based on where the other foot is. So the foot's here. And since the leg is curved this way, I will say the foot is about here. I'm assuming that this, she's kind of like pivoting the foot somehow. I don't think she, she's sitting on something, but I think she's sitting on a rock. So if she's sitting on a rock, I believe she is, or a bench or something to that factor. What I would do is put a little foreshortening on this leg a little bit. Arian. When I looked more closely it showed she was like sitting on her leg or placing her leg weight in her foot for balance. I think that's what's happening here. So if she if that's the case. Let's see. Oh, that's stupid. You're right. Then you take away this, ignore everything I just said there, and then Arian, we just overlap. It was like, like tucked in like how they look when they're sitting on their knees, kind yeah, of. Yeah, the, the foot will be here. My dumbass didn't even think of that. A foot it will overlap.
put our hand. She actually is sitting. She's kneeling. I did not. I could not figure it out at that moment. She was kneeling the entire time. Let's put the hand about here. Let's put the hand about there. This arm is a little bit too elongated in my opinion, so what we're gonna do is grab this arm here. We gotta elongate that part here so we can balance out that leg. And balance out the arm problem. Head here, I will need to make it a bit smaller. So, make it a bit smaller. So yeah, I think this is fine, right here. Actually I made this leg too bumped up, I should make it more straight on like this. And then the leg, let's So yeah, that's how you draw the leg. It's basically what you're doing is overlapping. The first thing at first I thought her leg was out, but apparently she was just kneeling on her foot. Now I would say I probably elongated some parts a little bit too hard, but it was enough to see what I'm talking about. So if I push this like more in here and grab like probably this part of the, push it in more, it would be more like this. There we go. So that's how you have her water the plants in that sense. I know it's a very rough sketch, but it is what it is. Because what we was what I was identifying here was the shapes and what's what. Uh, and this shoulder here. Yeah, this shoulder here should be more down here. Because we're seeing more of that back, so the back will be pushed in like this. There we go. That really shows the her feminine waist here. And so, so I hope that was helpful and at least explains a lot better. Um, the point there that is to look out for that uh, negative space. So if it resembles close to the negative space, you're on the right track. If it doesn't, then you're doing something wrong. So like for instance, um, right here and here. We know these are triangle-like shapes under them. Good. Because if you look at the reference, it's not one for one, but you can t identify them as triangles. So you're on the right track. If they look like anything but the triangle, if it looks like a square or a circle or a octagon or anything but or a diamond or, or uh, a trapezoid or something like that then you're not on the right track you have to fix it 
but if you're you know you're on the right track when you're almost close to the, sh the overall shape then all you need to do is just refine and try to get as close as possible so that proves that you're on the right track that's why negative shapes are helpful because at least let you know that you're on the right track it may not be one-on-one -on -one, but it helps yes so there you go all right, guys, so with that said, have a great night. I hope that was helpful for Ari and stuff like that. We'll be here tomorrow. Um, so the, ultimately, the goal is to build as much reaction videos as possible so I can post them t two or three times a day. And then um, what we can do is get to that 3,000-hour watch time, and then after that, I'll be focusing a lot making tutorials again and making drawmations and everything. But... And I will be still streaming, just not every day. I'll stream like probably on the weekdays, but not on the weekends. Or probably Monday, Wednesday, Friday type stuff. Oh, there's 26 people in this. That must be fucking Twitter. Um, uh, might be Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Or maybe something like that. Maybe like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday thing. But not an everyday thing once we hit that 3,000 hour watch time. That's the overall goal. So I can actually make content for y'all and make a bunch of tutorials because I know a bunch of people have been waiting where the tutorials are coming out. They are coming out. It's just that I need to construct them in a way that it seems easy to digest. And also for the patrons as well who gets the more longer exclusive stuff because I've been lacking on that. So till I get that 3,000 3, hour watch time, which are at 1,200 um we will eventually get there within less than a month if we really play our cards right so with that said i'm out here guys have a great night and i'll see you guys tomorrow all right later guys bye bye Doot, do, 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 do.